Dámy, Dámy a pánové, pánové vážení hosté, milí delegáti. Europe in which I want to live and it is supposed to show how the young generation sees or foresees the year 2050 when they grow adult and we can dream all together and we can all calculate how old shall we be in 2050 providing we are still here and uh, then we will come back to the present times and I will speak about those who have assumed the aegis over this project. It is the um, office of the Czech government, uh, of the presidency, of uh, the uh, EU in uh, 22, and uh, the Minister of Education, of uh, European Affairs, Mr. Mikolaj Beck. Uh, sorry. The Minister of Culture, Martin Baxa, Minister for Research, Science and Innovations, Mrs. Elena Lajcharlova, the Associations of Regions and uh, um, Municipalities of the Czech Republic and uh, uh, the Association of uh, uh, Municipalities and Cities. And uh, <clears throat> it is held within the scope of the Czech Presidency uh, of the EU and it also reaches uh, beyond the borders of the EU to some other European states and to some other continents. I want to introduce the honorary guests, Professor uh, Radek Radka Veldova, who is the Deputy Minister, um, um, who is responsible for higher education within the Ministry of uh, uh, Education, Youth and Sports. I also want to welcome Mrs. Martina Vetiakova, who is deputy member of the government uh, of the Ministry of uh, uh, Youth, Education, Youth and uh, Sports. We also have Dr. Martinkova, who is pro-rector of the University, uh, of the Charles University. Professor Dr. Tomáš Zima, the Emirates doctor, uh, uh, rector of the Charles Unis University, who is the guarant of this event. And Dr. Andrei Cherny, the general manager of Czech centers. Mr. Pavel Storkan, the head of the work and art company. We also have Lubica Krenova, who is director of the Slovak Institute in Prague. And Mr. Stefan Jankovic, the first secretary of the uh, Embassy of Slovak Republic in the Czech Republic. And now I'd like to pass the floor on uh, some of the guests. The first to speak would be Mrs. Radka Veldova. Professor, the floor is yours. Dear friends, dear guests, whether you're physically present or whether you're on the stream, let me be a little personal because I do not only represent my ministry being a deputy for uh, higher education, but I'm also a co-organizer. I've been present in the preparation of the uh, work together with Czech centers and with the walk and art uh, company. It is a fourth event that we've organized together. We were looking for some topics that would be relevant for the contemporary youth and also those who educate the young people and also relevant to the parents. Mr. Sturkan, who was the first to think about Europe as a topic and I was a bit upset when I heard it for the first time because I said, okay, Europe, what would you do about that? And I said, that will be a kind of a show, artistic show and a creative show and similar things. So we also invented an educational program which has been um, uh, uh, recorded 
and it's available on the YouTube and it is both in English and in Czech. And there were many people who were uh, participating in the creation of the program. So Mr. Storkan, being a director, did a very good job. And uh, the second person who was very important was uh, Mr. Cherny, who is the director of Chick Centers. He made the thing a bit more complicated because he said Europe in which I want to live. That's nice, but well, let's, let's be a bit more specific. So he said it should be Europe at 2050. And uh, you remember the conversation when we first mentioned uh, this year and we were trying to find out whether it made sense and we gradually realized that it did make sense and I want to thank my colleagues for having been a good team that worked not only during those previous four events but also in the preparation of this one the scope of which is unprecedented. It's not just Czech event, it's not a Czech Slovak event, it is a European event and I highly appreciate that and uh, Mr. Cherny's role was really uh, very uh, important. Uh, in times when uh, uh, Professor Zima was uh, the rector of this university, I must say that when we started with this project, I was a bit incredulous. I was afraid that we would never be able to, 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 to manage. And he said, yes, let's go ahead with it. There are topics which are very relevant for Europe and we should use them in a didactic way and uh, to uh, mediate them thus also to those who will work with, uh, uh, with students. Uh, then later on, Mrs. Eva Nitrova joined in and she was in charge of the organizational part of it. And she organized this conference and the entire follow-up. And I'm very thankful to Eva because without her, without you, we would never be able to go as far as that. So I believe that this will be a very pleasant day because you will first hear the keynote, then there will be some presentations and then together with students you will be present uh, in the ceremony of signing the uh, memorandum and uh, we will have a panel discussion with interesting actors in the field of education and in the field of uh, um, development of a society, of culture and so on. And uh, then there will be some uh, some social activities. Unfortunately, I will have to leave soon because uh, um, we have the Ukrainian Minister of Education who's uh, um, uh, coming to see us to the ministry and we have to be present there because we've organized a program for him. But we will certainly tell him about this project. And we also thought that it would be interesting to invite Ukrainian uh, teachers and Ukrainian students to, to invite them to consider altogether topics which might be relevant for this project and for the year 2050. But you will hear more about that later. So the continuation will, uh, c certainly we will be uh, telling our Ukrainian friends about all of this. So I will come in the evening and I will also come to the first night of the exhibition. I will not tell you because I also calculated how old I will be in 2050. I will not tell you, but I could still be alive. So we will meet then with Ondra and uh, we will just uh, see whether our ideas, our uh, imagination was uh, uh, the same as the reality will be. So once again, I want to thank you all. I want to thank you for the courage because this was a project which uh, didn't cost millions. 
It was zero, zero, zero. That's what we had to start with. We were greatly assisted by some of the sponsors, by the Charles University, by the Czech centers. But certainly, this was not something which would deserve European grants or subsidies. So I think that if we manage to strike such a cooperation with the uh, uh, academic environment, with the uh, people from the field of education, it's a great success. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introductory word. That was uh, uh, Professor Radka Vildova. And now I would like to give the floor to uh, the pro-rector for study affairs from the Charles University, Mrs. Martinkova. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I highly appreciate the opportunity of being together with you today and uh, participating in the conference which puts the present young generation at the forefront. Although it might seem just uh, a matter of fact, but not always do we really pay due attention and due respect to what the young people and even children think about us. Yet it is these children and these students who will be the determining factor in the development of our society in the future. The benefit of this conference, in my opinion, dwells in its capacity to display the ideas of the young people about the future through the creative work, which is the most sincere and the purest form of expression. It shows how the world could develop and we will take also the children's uh, perspective, which is certainly very different from what we see. Every generation sees its present situation in a different way and it assigns a different uh, weight to various aspects which seemed uh, what seemed very important to us may look marginal now and uh, the other way around, what we wouldn't have any idea of thinking about or being worried about may be very worrying and may indeed be relevant to the entire society in the future. So I'm convinced that it is the task of not just the Charles University, which I represent, but it is indeed uh, the task for all of us to strive to understand the ideas, the ambitions, the aspirations and fears of young people fears of what the further development of this world and of this society will be in the future. So I think that it's highly beneficial for our society and I'm very glad to be a part of it. So I hope that you will spend a pleasant day and I do hope that the, that all the positive expectations of our young generation for the year 2050 be borne out and that all the fears and worries be found uh, uh, futile. Thank you for the introductory word. And now I would like to pass the floor on Dr. Tomáš Zima, the emerit uh, a rector of the university and the garant of the project. Good morning, dear colleagues and students. It's uh, a year and a day since we declared this uh, uh, program in Hradec Králové for pupils and uh, students of the Czech uh, uh, Republic and ask them to uh, to, to address uh, their colleagues in the other EU countries uh, and elsewhere. Uh, there were 75 schools who joined the project uh, uh, from 17 countries of Europe. We live uh, together on one planet and we share all that's joyful and uh, 
the troubles that come and it depends on our on us the aging for the uh, generation to um, hand over the planet and our society to children in good state which is not always successful however students have one big uh, advantage they are open they, their minds are open and uh, so are their activities and that's what we found in video presentation and in uh, creative uh, decorative uh, presentations uh, the students showed us uh, the way they imagine uh, Europe and the life around us and it's up to us to help them in that I said it's a partnership project of several institutions, uh, especially during the Czech presidency in the European Union. And one of the motives, of course, is uh, the sustainability uh, issue and uh, the issue of uh, science and technology. If we want uh, renewable energy resources and if we want to limit uh, the carbon footprint, it's uh, basically, and most of all, it's uh, science that's needed to develop uh, hydrogen energy uh, sector and uh, such uh, and uh, low consumption of energy. So Charles University became one of the guarantors, uh, providing us the science uh, input uh, to make our planet. Uh, more beautiful in 2050. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Dr. Uh, Tomasz Zima, uh, may I remind you that you we, we shall meet with Professor Zima once again during his speech in uh, the afternoon. So we are looking forward to it. And now I ask uh, Andrei Czerny, the general manager of Czech centers, to take the floor. Good morning. I am uh, in the habit of taking the microphone like this. I welcome you most cordially. I wish you a pleasant morning. I'll just tell you a few words how it all came about in the Czech centers. Sometime in uh, 2021, we invited a number of projects for the Czech presidency with three topics, uh, sustainability, creativity, and innovation. One of them became uh, the 2050 Europe project. In long uh, talks and negotiations between ourselves, we uh, worked on it. Many ideas come up not in uh, your room, but they come up in dialogue. And dialogue was uh, what uh, stood at the beginning of this project. It was our uh, goal from the very beginning to create a platform upon which uh, the European youth could uh, formulate the creative ideas of uh, Europe they want to see. And it should be a platform in which, uh, or thanks to which, uh, the youth will uh, perceive that it's their responsibility of how Europe, or what Europe will look like. So it's not only Europe we want to live in, but uh, Europe we shall live in. It is not by chance that if when we work through our directors of Czech centers, and we have 25 of those around the world, and more than 10 of them took part, so 17 countries were involved when they addressed uh, foreign schools and uh, it was mentioned that 75 uh, is their number 
and they put the topic not only in their creative arts uh, subjects, but also into the humanitarian science or civil science uh, program. And that created a subject that's called the European Union, because we know so little of uh, the EU, though we speak of it quite confidently. So that was one of the moments that uh, was interesting to us. We know that we slightly complicated uh, the work uh, to, of our colleague who uh, headed the team to, uh, who was uh, to select uh, the victors of uh, the competition. It is civil society that will create uh, the Europe we want to see. It was our goal to support two aspects of uh, education that we firmly hope will be reflected in the new concept of uh, Czech education, its creative approach and critical thinking. Everything we thought about was, uh, in fact, uh, planned before the 24th of February of this year, and uh, the times were quite different of the ones we live through now, uh, our generation and the generation uh, after us or before us. We are able to be here for you, the youth, in the elementary struggle for keeping democracy. But one thing in which we need uh, a serious uh, pressure from your side is the pressure for the planet to survive. It concerns the climate. Our generation doesn't have uh, enough uh, forces or power, and the instinct uh, telling them that uh, we have to be radical in this respect. So that's one point. And uh, in the second point, I would like to thank the partners who took part. Pavel Storkan, Radka Vildova, and the organizations uh, we are very thankful to. I want to thank Teresa Punova from uh, uh, the Czech centers, who was a great coordinator of the project. Thank you. Andrei Czerny, thank you for the opening speech. And uh, diploma engineer Pavel uh, Storkan from the world and our organization. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this activities. I think the speakers before me said it everything in a great way, so I shall not come back to uh, the contents. Uh, the cooperation was uh, great and swift. We were able to coordinate uh, hour by hour. I would like to thank more persons which were involved in the project and gave their support to it. I am glad that during the project there was a discussion held on the narrower uh, involvement of students in the discussion. Ondra Czerny said it in a great way. It's really Terrific that uh, we will now sign a memorandum that will bring uh, high school students and uh, university students together. Uh, it will be another step, and more people took part in it. I want to appreciate uh, the director of uh, the uh, secondary school uh, of uh, the town of Smichov, Mr. Sablik, he made an immense amount of work, and he showed us how high schools are functioning, and I am really uh, 
Enchanted when I come there and uh, even see their work during the vacations. We also had a big uh, amount of work of uh, the Pro Dean of the Pedagogical Faculty of the Charles University. And I want to appreciate uh, the involvement of students themselves. Mr. Michal Farnik, uh, the chairman of the Chamber of Students uh, in the University, Jan Gondek, who represents uh, the uh, secondary schools stu students, they uh, paid a big attention and uh, put a big amount of their time into the work uh, and uh, all that also led to today's activity, today's event. So, according to the way we set it all and how Professor Zima uh, announced it in, in uh, the meeting of the Union of uh, Citizen Towns, uh, it all came through. And I want to thank the foreign uh, participants who, without hesitation, came to Prague. I welcome you all, and I am glad that uh, you decided to come. I hope that you will enjoy the meeting and, indeed, Prague. I wish you all a great and pleasant day. Thank you, Pavel Storkan. And at this moment, I will invite uh, Martina Betakova, MS. The, we have the first presentation, the Czech Republic, as the presidency of the EU uh, deputy ministry uh, in the Ministry of Education, Youth and uh, Sports. Uh, she prepared his presentation and uh, she will speak in. Uh, instead of um, Ministry of Edu Minister of Education, Mr. Balash. I greet you all, both in this uh, beautiful hall and uh, on uh, the net. I will speak instead of uh, our minister who uh, has to deal with uh, the unexpected visit by Ministry of Education of Ukraine. Before I get down to my presentation, however, I would like to thank for the possibility to be with you. And uh, in a way, well, not really to correct, uh, but uh, in fact, it's uh, easy to say that uh, the way Europe will look like in 2050 depends on you. Uh, it was Comenius who said uh, that uh, the future generation will be the same uh, as we um, educate or bring up our children. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the 2050 Europe doesn't only depend on us and on you who take part in the project. To a big extent, it also depends on those who are not with us. Uh, a number of uh, other young people who are not interested, and it depends on what we do as uh, the present generation. Uh, the state in which we will be handing over the world to you, it depends on us, and also on the way we uh, try hard to give you the space. Uh, if we do not do uh, it well, it will be so hard for you to take the responsibility for 2050. Now, I will, I have to say sorry, I'll have to leave short after, shortly after my speech. We will meet the directors of schools uh, and we'll try to tell them that it all mm, also depends on our generation, on how attractive we can make the education for you. Now, down to my task. You probably know that our presidency is on during the second half of uh, 2022. Presidency is not an opportunity to see your national interests through. 
It may look so, but in fact, presidency is a big task and a big responsibility for keeping the continuity of the functioning of the Council of European Union. The biggest uh, role of all is uh, uh, provide for the organization of the meetings and uh, to chair uh, those meetings and also to prepare the contents, uh, the materials and the preparatory work uh, of, uh, in the working groups on uh, individual topics. Uh, you may imagine, when I, if I tell you uh, what documents are worked on upon uh, in the sphere of education, they of course will take more than one or two or three weeks, it would be so uh, difficult to find a total agreement between uh, the participants. We uh, therefore set some priorities for our presidency in the sphere of education. The assistance to Ukraine that, of course, uh, sprang out uh, of uh, the actual situation. But there are some general topics. It's digital education and uh, um, circumstances uh, uh, connected to it, then uh, success or lack of it in schooling. And then the topic of uh, the youth and uh, intergenerational uh, dialogue. So these are the three big topics which correspond with our own strategy of uh, education policies uh, till 2030. Um, may I just ask you, which of you of the young people have uh, some idea which are the main two main ideas of the strategy? Have have you ever had the possibility to look through it? So, you can see that we are bad in doing that because we have to communicate better so as to uh, bring the ideas to the target group. Our strategy says that by 2030 we would like to have education that will be aimed on competences needed by the young people for their professional life and for their personal, satisfied personal life and their uh, public life. These are the three goals. And the second idea is to make education uh, accessible to any child, uh, regardless of what um, place they are born uh, into or what families uh, and so on. There are three main documents uh, that are being developed during the presidency, we ex expect their um, approval in, uh, or during the next week. One is uh, the well-being of digital uh, education. Two years ago, we would speak of uh, digital literacy and uh, IT thinking. But in reaction to the two COVID uh, years, we developed further not only to well-being but also to safety in the cyber uh, space and uh, keeping equilibrium. If you thought of how many applications you used in, on your mobile since, the morn since this morning and uh, when it was last that when you spent, say, uh, 40 hours without uh, reaching for your mobile phone. All this brings its impact on the perception of uh, social uh, contacts. Uh, so the question is what to teach and how to use uh, digital technologies uh, for further tuition. What does it do with our social environment? All that should be included in the document that should be approved of and published next week. Another document is a conclusion of the Council on the support of intergenerational 
Jsou vlastně úplně uh, uh, jako nově, nově pojmenované a probírané téma. Je to velice inovativní v rámci předsednictví a v rámci Rady Evropské unie, které to se snaží najít be tackled within the Council of Europe because through the intergeneration dialogue where the young people would be involved, we seek to find ways to preserving social solidarity and intergeneration uh, equity and fairness. That's what I was speaking about at the beginning. It's the behavior of our generation that is uh, determining for the intergeneration solidarity. It is the issue of uh, uh, handling and distributing the resources that will be available in, uh, in 2050. This is not the result of something we only did yesterday. It's a long-term project. This is a document uh, on the ways towards uh, school success. I'm certain this is not really relevant to you, but uh, there is a high rate of school failure of certain uh, groups of young people. Uh, people often, young people uh, often tend to leave schools prematurely, and this is closely associated with the uh, career success, career development, and with the feeling of happiness and fulfillment in the personal life. So that is on the, something about the three fundamental documents. And I will just briefly go through what we achieved in the past uh, six months or so. This is the review of some of the events. Uh, the Council for uh, the uh, Education, Youth and Sports will be Organized next week, and there will be a final conference uh, that will be uh, organized uh, in Brussels, and there should be about a there should be about 40 people who will be in the delegation uh, from the Czech Republic. Some interesting events, one of them was the summer conference of youth that focused on the topic of sustainable development. It was uh, um, alluded to several times and uh, uh, young people were given a lot of space when uh, participating in the conference and uh, they identified a number of issues, among others, as early as now, they need to have access to political decisions. Uh, they have to be able to participate and to have an impact on what is being decided on, because whatever is decided now will have an impact on the future decades. Now, the Ministry of Education sometimes fails to communicate properly. So good co communication, attractive communication towards the target group was another issue that was mentioned by the young. And also the availability of trustworthy data, trustworthy information. Young people should be given easy access uh, to some of the projects. It shouldn't be just for the uh, brightest or for a uh, narrow group uh, of uh, some of the smartest uh, uh, participants or kids. It should be accessible to all. There was also a conference of school directors and uh, Ukrainian party. The uh, Ukrainian party was also invited. This is quite a specific feature of our presidency. We invite um, the Ukrainian participants to a number of activities. Uh, and uh, this uh, meeting was focused on uh, digital issues. Uh, it uh, uh, dealt with the high rate of digital illiteracy, which often prevails not only in the elderly generation, but oftentimes among teachers and among younger people. And uh, uh, the help, the assistance to Ukraine was yet another uh, big topic of this conference. So we were trying trying to identify concrete steps, how to help uh, Ukraine, how to help uh, the field of education. We seek to uh, provide them with uh, digital technologies, but also schools, because uh, uh, children have to get access to schools um, in a physical uh, meaning of the word. 
takovým překvapivým a inovativním způsobem proběhlo setkání vrchních ředitelů pro oblast mládeže, protože to tradičně setkání vrchních ředitelů je velmi oficiální, formální, takové jednání u stolu. A naši organizátoři velmi aby byli součástí toho, Uh, uh, from the directors, but the other way around. Uh, the directors asked children what their ideas were. Now, the question to you, if you were asked to give us something which you're proud of, which is your Uh, tak your strong point, uh, could those of you who have acquired <laughs> at school <laughs> during the education, uh, I can znamená, see three hands, hands, meaning that the rest of you uh, have acquired this, these competences in an informal way, that is, not něco, co si at school. And that is something which, doby, we could, uh, which we could label as a megatrend of uh, today. And the education should react to it, because unless the formal education adjusts itself to the fact that most of the competences uh, is acquired uh, outside the school, then schools will become irrelevant. And the topic of uh, uh, the conference was the uh, interconnection of the formal and the non-formal uh, or informal education in the areas first. Whatever is acquired outside of school should be acknowledged by school. So if you go to a school of arts and you can play uh, a violin, you know the notes and uh, you know the uh, history of music, you shouldn't be uh, obliged to attend to the musical lessons at school and uh, start with the ABC. And uh, you, the, the, the teacher should allow you to read a book or whatever do something else. So the results of informal education should be acknowledged in the formal education. The other thing is that the experience uh, from informal education should be transferable to schools so that the innovative approaches, inno uh, innovative uh, methods which are used in organizations like the Boy Scouts or uh, some other uh, uh, Organizations uh, should be also applied at schools. They should be accepted by schools. Now, the third suggestion was that whatever is a part of the formal education should also be adopted and acknowledged in the non-formal uh, activities. These are the three elementary lines that should be uh, put in place in order to interconnect the formal and the informal. Uh, education. So the important topic that is uh, uh, that characterizes our uh, presidency is the involvement of Ukraine and also planning interventions when the war is over. We will have it, uh, Ukraine to trigger again uh, the uh, activities uh, the education processes to help them uh, in uh, rebuilding uh, the uh, homeland. So the team of uh, the Czech presidency has received a lot of feedback. There is really a high rate of satisfaction. I think that we managed, uh, we succeeded in our role, but uh, there are some very important events 
events which are still ahead um, before the end of this month and in September, uh, sorry, in December. So uh, it's only after that that we will evaluate it. So I hope that this was interesting to you and I also hope that from our today's conference there will be some feedback and there will be some inspiration for you and that you will carry it away and you will duly use it during your, uh, your uh, activities in the future. The Czech Republic presides over uh, the uh, European Council and this was Martina Beťákova. And uh, now we will listen to Michaela Šojdrova, who is the uh, member of European Parliament and you will listen to her video address. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank you for having invited me and I want to extend my greetings to the participants. The project Europe uh, 2050 is new to me, but it looks great and I think it can be a great opportunity of uh, how to involve young people in the considerations, in the discussion, in the very uh, creation, formation of the society and its policies. And uh, that is also true for the European level, which is not so distant. So, once again, thank you. I want to thank you for the invitation and I want to extend my greetings to all the participants. The project Europe 2050 is new to me, but it looks very interesting. It can be a great opportunity how to involve young people in the reflections, in the discussions and in the very formation of the society and of its policies up to the European level, which is not that far that, uh, or as distant as you might believe. Unfortunately, right now I have to attend to the plenary meeting in Strasbourg, and that is why I pre-recorded this contribution uh, to support you and the entire project. I'm preparing this on the eve of the most important uh, uh, anniversary uh, for the Czech Republic and its uh, society. It is the day, the 17th of November, when freedom and democracy returned to Czechoslovakia. Uh, the civil society before that event was uh, very restricted, but still active. Let us recall um, uh, Charter 77. And uh, since 1989, uh, it was given the opportunity of uh, uh, developing further. The year 1989 was a milestone in Europe for some fundamental changes in which civil society played a key role. It had existed, but it was obscure. It was active, it was menaced by all kinds of repressions, but there were people who sought to organize within the scope of their interests, be them uh, religious, political or societal, to organize something and to organize themselves. And that was very important for the uh, transition of power in an intelligent way, which allowed us to pass from a totalitarian a regime to democracy. Most of you, as I believe uh, have not really uh, lived at that time or you were very young. It's like my parents who were telling me about the year 1968. But it is all the more important to recall this uh, milestone because we have to remind ourselves that uh, freedom and democracy are not granted. We can see it in some Eastern countries like Belarus and Russia where freedom is suppressed and the uncontrollable, uncontrolled power is concentrated in just a single pair of hands. But no need to go that far. In democratic societies, we also see these attempts to manipulate the public uh, uh, opinion uh, to, to uh, uh, spread extremism 
and uh, 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 fake news and disinformation. That is why it is so important for every citizen to make full use of his or her rights to participate in elections and to strive to influence, to have their bearing on what's going on on various levels of the society. I would like to talk to you now. I would like to ask a question, for instance. Who of you is involved in such activities? What are uh, what is your experience? But my role now is to share with you some of the facts that are um, relevant to the European Union. And I will try to do it in a way that will be a bit amusing to you. After all, you can see all the hustle behind me. Uh, there are many people and it's quite busy and people work. It's really a living uh, institution. Theory tends to be boring, but it is good to have some theoretical knowledge. It is important so as uh, not to allow anyone to manipulate us. We often hear that the European Union is based on values. Let us recall which of them uh, these are. This is a quote from the Treaty on European Union. It is based on the values and respect for uh, uh, human dignity, human rights, uh, rule of law, um, human rights, including uh, the rights of minorities. And uh, these are not so many values. We can easily remember them, but they are really very important. Uh, the uh, societies that are based on these values are pluralistic. They do not uh, uh, admit uh, intolerance, they uh, provide for the equality of men and women. Civil society is one of the best guardians of these European values and it is indispensable for the democratic arrangement of the society. Yet these various values are fragile. They are not granted. We have to defend them. We have to promote them. That is why we have the civil society. We also have to know what a civil society is and what is its role in the uh, ever-changing world. The civil society is the manifestation of free uh, organization of people like in, in uh, entities like trade unions, non-governmental organizations, sports clubs, um, uh, professional unions, uh, and uh, it also includes the activities of universities, of media, of uh, uh, local governance. The civil society allows the citizens to participate actively without having to be a member of a political party. And uh, it is a kind of a mediator. And just like media, it is a watchdog of democracy because it draws attention to all the uh, uh, all the infractions or dangerous phenomena. Let us recall the definition by Václav Havel. It is an informal definition. He said this, a very important manifestation of life and moral uh, feeling for human solidarity and togetherness and for the richness of uh, uh, human interests is the life in associations, in foundations, in all kinds of civil initiatives, everything that uh, that sprouts from the bottom on a voluntary basis as a self-structuring of the modern society. Václav Havel knew very well what he was talking about because he himself participated or organized uh, such a civil society in the totalitarian uh, times. Let us recall some topical cases, though, and uh, there are certain differences, as you will see. Let us speak first about the civil society in the Czech Republic. There are hundreds of organizations, of associations covering all kinds of interests, be it charity, be it the uh, historical uh, interests, uh, be it codes, be it environmentalists and uh, whatever. And a great example of such informal civil society is the way it can react to some tensions in the society 
let us uh, uh, remember the organization Million Moments for Democracy, which uh, was founded on the 17th of November 2017. This organization organized the biggest rally since 1989 for democratic values, for respecting the rule of law and the freedom of media. And it is still active within the framework of organizing all kinds of lectures and meetings and so on. And it is especially uh, watchful whenever there are some threats to democracy. Then there is the civil society movements in Slovakia. Let's remember, let's recall the reaction of the society to what happened before 2018, when corruption was growing, when uh, the government uh, uh, was very arrogant to the society. But the impulse to the activization of the civil society was the murder of the journalist Jan Kuciak and his fiancée. Jan Kuciak was a journalist who uh, collected uh, evidence on the corruptive, uh, on the corrupt activities, and uh, when he was assassinated, most hitherto tacit citizens were provoked to oppose uh, the government and to topple the government. That was in Slovakia. But then there is Hungary, which is often referred to in the context of violation of the rule of law and restriction to civil society. I am speaking about it because two weeks ago I went on a business trip or a working trip to Hungary and I must admit I did not feel at ease. Budapest was beautiful, people were nice, but the atmosphere sort of reminded me of what I remember before 1989 in then Czechoslovakia. People complain of the restriction of academic liberties, of uh, all kinds of freedoms, and they complain of the autocratic uh, uh, behavior of the prime minister. But there, no civil society are uh, 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 show show up. So something has to be done. People have to do something. They have to uh, show up if they want to change something. In Hungary, they have the democratic system, they have democratic uh, elections, but the civil society, if it wants to change something, they have to do something themselves in order to win greater freedoms. What can the EU do for the development of civil society? Is that our task? Uh, let us look what the role of the EU is. The role of the European Union in uh, the development of the civil society is a supporting one, but yet it is very important. Uh, it supports civil society because it looks after the um, values to see them through. Therefore, the programs of the EU are aimed at uh, uh, specific organizations, uh, uh, associations, schools, uh, to support uh, of uh, um, education, mobility, cooperation. That is the task. Uh, of uh, the European Union. The European Parliament approved uh, a resolution in 2022 about uh, limitations of space for civil society. Therefore, they drew attention to the fact that uh, uh, there are problems that we have to uh, watch. There are three conditions. Uh, First, for the democratic society and for civil society, what we need is a good, uh, a good environment, good political environment which is open. We need um, equal access uh, to information and education and participation of the society in creating policies. The European Parliament warns against the restrictions of uh, that space and uh, quotes uh, the duty of the uh, states to provide for a space that will be uh, approving and supporting uh, the uh, development of a democracy. And it has to draw, draw attention to cases of violation of values or human rights. It calls for prevention or for the uh, 
improvement of situation. And that brings me to the final part of my speech. It is necessary uh, for the development of civil society, apart from the family, it is the education which is so much needed for the civil society to grow. We have uh, small powers in the organization of uh, contents of education. What we, what we can uh, do to see it through is uh, the financial support to programs. Uh, one of them aimed at values is the program named uh, citizens uh, of values uh, and uh, education uh, about uh, one and a half billion euro is uh, planned for it uh, in the coming years uh, uh, one of the supported ta uh, tasks is uh, the uh, uh, orientation on youth on uh, human rights in the EU and uh, providing for by their participation. It's a specific project in which uh, the young people can take part. But the main financial tool for education is well known. It's Erasmus Plus and the European Association for Solidarity. They um, bring in the sharing of practical uh, experience. And there is a call, for example, that for the NGOs to submit their applications for support by the 20th of December to give their support to uh, further education of the youth. Uh, the European Parliament is unequivocal, the body to uh, give their support, but also to help uh, organize projects. Uh, one of the examples uh, can be the European Forum of the Youth. I have been working with them for years now. Their feedback and uh, their initiatives uh, are ones that I always uh, use. Uh, young people are interested, they want to have their say in public politics. Well, if I am looking at the future from the point of view of this experience, it makes me optimistic. You know that 2050 is the biding year for um, carbon neutrality in the EU. We voluntarily took that deadline and I hope that will be meeting that uh, target. I would certainly wish uh, for a short period of a re a return of peace and calm to Ukraine and the rest of Europe. Uh, that's another thing the, the civil society is about. I want to thank you for lasting with me. You are courageous citizens, and I hope that you are good students and good teachers. Uh, now, I am now saying goodbye from here, from the European Parliament. Once again, I thank you for the invitation. I wish you a good conference and uh, health and forces for the rest of uh, the conference. So it was Mikhaila Shoidrova speaking about the civil society in Europe. Now we uh, look forward to the signing of the memorandum of cooperation between secondary schools and the universities that will bring uh, together students of both sectors, uh, uh, of the parliament, of uh, the children and the youth and the uh, Czech Secondary Schools Union and they will bring in the uh, Students Conference of the Czech Republic. Three signatories uh, to that uh, agreement will join us. Isabel Goldbergova, uh, the first uh, vice chairperson of uh, the Association of uh, Children and Youth. Uh, please. Join us, Isabella. I also invite Jan Gondek, uh, the negotiator for the Parliament of uh, Children and Youth and uh, the chairman of uh, the uh, secondary school senator of uh, uh, the city of Prague. Welcome. And Michal Varnig, uh, the chairman of uh, the students' chamber of uh, the Council of Universities.
A zároveň bych každého z nich pár slov. A each of them to say a few words. Let's start in the reversed order. So Michal Farnik will be the first one to speak. Because I welcome you, I greet you. It's a great thing that we have the opportunity to sign the memorandum at this conference. I'm glad that during the project. There was this initiative taken by the founders aimed at closer cooperation between secondary schools and university universities. Some of them cannot be with us today, but well, we spoke of, uh, of, um, of the fact that we do not have a un united initiative on the part of schools. I am glad that we can now now present the result of our common work and uh, the promise of our common uh, activities. Uh, the association um, sets itself a task to represent all the students in the Czech Republic in areas not only concerning education, we have the potential to speak for young people on behalf of young people, telling that we have the will to live in Europe that will fit us well, in which we will have good feeling, where it concerns the climate and the access to education, to equality between genders and so on. It is in these areas in which we would, uh, we have to be more legible. And I'm glad that together with the um, representatives of the Parliament of Children and Youth and uh, the Secondary uh, School Students Union, we have the uh, possibility to sign a memorandum. Thank you for that. So that was Michal Farnik, now Jan Gonde, the negotiator for the Parliament of uh, Children and youth and uh, the chairperson of uh, the secondary school union of uh, Prague. It's a great honor, ladies and gentlemen, to stand in front of you un under the portrait of uh, President Masaryk, who uh, Propagate to the program, uh, we also want to spread. It is the first time for me to, uh, the first time that uh, uh, secondary school students and university students unite on this uh, high level. We are meeting uh, in an atmosphere when the topics of the youth are going far beyond the scope of the Ministry of Education. The sectors were not able to cooperate in, uh, the to on the topics uh, concerning the youth, and it is one of our goals to change it, to involve students. Many things uh, concerning us uh, directly were decided upon on the highest level, about us without us. And we want to take a good direction uh, and to involve students themselves. Uh, through the memorandum, this is what we uh, want to achieve. Uh, students were not uh, united, and we were reminded of the fact uh, by the Ministry of Education and other organizations. Therefore, we decided to uh, set up an organization. And we also call on others who may be in, involved in uh, civil society's activities uh, to, to join us, and we call upon other institutions and organizations to start to work with us and take their part in uh, the change of uh, the educational system to prepare a better world by 2050. Thank you. Jan Gondek, the negotiator for the uh, Parliament and uh, chairperson of uh, the secondary schools. And uh, now Isabella. Good morning to you all. Once again. Welcome. It was uh, said on several occasions by the boys. I basically represent Kamil Czerny, the 
uh, chairman of uh, the secondary school, or uh, the parliament of uh, children and uh, youth. Uh, he was unable to take part. I am looking forward to cooperation, and uh, I want to tell you that the students will now be able to communicate, to work together, and take part in activities. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel Goldenberg, the first uh, or vice chairperson of uh, the association. Before we have a break, we have uh, the uh, activity itself, signing. Please uh, get your cameras ready and the signatory. Please come to the tables, uh, the lenses are now well set, so we can go on and uh, to sign. It now seems that everything is, has been done, and may I ask for a round of, of applause. Mm, taking the first step, it is said, uh, means 80% success, and we hope to get it up to 100%. So these are the signatories uh, to the agreement. I will now uh, declare break to uh, take some drinks, water, tea or coffee. In 10 minutes, we shall reassemble. Now, to, to yeah, so congratulations from the honorary guests. Now, a 10 minutes break, and we look forward to meeting you again.
Dámy a pánové, vážení hosté, ještě jednou gentlemen, dear guests, once again, good morning to all of you who joined us in these historical our spaces to participate in the conference. Without further ado, I will start again, and the first speaker will be invited. What we will now talk about the perspective of the young people of the college, uh, sorry, um, uh, high school students, grammar school students. Uh, Isabel Goldbergová is uh, uh, the first speaker and uh, she will tell us something about this perspective. I hope Isabel Goldbergová is with us. Isabel možná ještě uh, Isabel čerpá tekutinu a síly někde uh, ve foaje, uh, zkusíme ji, když tak zavolat. We will try to call. Ano, tak pokud Isabel nedorazí, tak so, dáme přednost tedy here, druhému mluvčímu, který měl být v této hodině. A pak se pokusíme Isabel najít, we'll to by měl uh, Lohrán Prej, Evropa v roce 2050, tak Laurent Prey, yeah, who will výborně. speak about, the, about Europe pro 2050 and the students' perspective. A pojďme do toho. Tak vážené studentky, vážení studenti, vážené Dear students, dámy, vážení pánové. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I want to thank Mrs. Nitrova for the organization of this conference and for the invitation of the students' chamber of the council of the uh, college councils. The Charles University is uh, not only important for me, but uh, for the whole of my family, and uh, it's there that we're uh, always my ancestors got their education. There has always been somebody from our family uh, who was there. Uh, Václav Pacina was my grandpa, and that was back in the 50s when he joined the university. He was then uh, to become a sports journalist. So this is the student's history of my family, and obviously the expectations were that I would also get the uh, uh, so, uh, the, uh, the higher education and that I will opt for the academic career. The goals of such education is to support uh, the uh, capacities of students and to uh, teach them and train them uh, for uh, the uh, future career. I think that being born in Prague and being born to a family with this uh, history of education was uh, the greatest of good lucks. So, obviously, the students want to finish their studies and uh, sometimes it may be difficult because uh, there are exams, there are tests, but there are also crossroads where students have to opt for this or that, uh, um, this or that uh, discipline. But uh, it is always good to discuss about that uh, with the peers. I remember uh, meetings uh, with uh, my uh, classmates, not only uh, with uh, uh, during the grammar education, but also during the secondary education, but also during the primary education. And I also remember uh, the teachers and uh, uh, so uh, I remember my uh, uh, one of uh, uh, my uh, ancestors who was inspiring for the students who were uh, uh, heading for a brilliant career. There are figures uh, illustrating this story. Um, 
Euro student, uh, 21-90% uh, uh, of students work uh, while uh, studying. And there are even students who work during the lectures and they need to work in order to cover the expenses. Um, there is a low concentration of jobs uh, which are really uh, relevant to uh, the academic uh, uh, education. And sometimes students from poor families have really problems to cope and to make both ends meet. I'm thinking of one of my classmates. Uh, and uh, there are such students, uh, there are many such students uh, like him. The stories about the university students uh, sharing a tiny room and uh, uh, working full time in order to uh, cover the expenses. But the determination to carry on is inspiring especially given the obstacles and the challenges they have to cope with every day. Half of the university's students uh, drop uh, and uh, leave the school uh, and are bound to take a not well, not well paid school. Uh, secondary education is often uh, uh, specialized in uh, various professions. These are vocational training students, and uh, there is also a high dropout rate. I think that this is disproportionate in Northern Bohemia, so it's one-fifth. And sometimes it is also I live now and I have to face the record inflation. Uh, the prices of energies is growing and I fear every day for uh, my peers and uh, the future. If on the tertiary level, but much earlier. There must be better support uh, and better remuneration to teachers. There must be a better background. Uh, also, um, a member of participation in Europe in uh, 2050, and she will have uh, 10 minutes. Uh, she, she is the first deputy uh, regions in the Czech Republic. There are uh, more regions in the Czech Republic that are on the way, they are um, really developing and we hope that within four months or so the entire republic will be covered by these regional parliaments. And the reason why we do that is to give every young person uh, the possibility to, uh, uh, to participate providing he or she is interested in doing that. Because everyone can generate good ideas or can uh, do his or her part of work in some activities. And uh, there is a principle uh, which is common to all the parliaments, the, 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 princip the principle of operation. Uh, um, now, does uh, participation belong to uh, the idea of uh, Europe in uh, 2050? Obviously, uh, that's, uh, that goes without saying. You could see that we signed the memorandum because that uh, brings us together. It brings together uh, the secondary school students and the uh, tertiary education students. So they all want to participate and they hope they will. And we will try to improve. And uh, we, only, we can only hope that uh, it will get better or remain the way it is, but uh, that it would not uh, deteriorate. Peace is indispensable for that, and it is not everywhere, but we are not talking about this country, so hopefully it will remain so. But improvements would be welcome. For instance, hearings at school. 
Uh, today it's uh, Tuesday and I should be at school. But uh, it will be, I will be taken as an absenteeist because they don't let us, uh, they don't uh, 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 allow us to, to participate in such events if it is during the school time. So that should improve. And uh, yet there is yet another issue, and that's environment. It is a question to all of us, a question or an issue rather for the older and the younger ones as well, because we all share the same planet and we all want to share a planet that is clean, that can, where people can breathe and uh, where diseases and uh, smog and all kinds of other plagues don't prevail. That is why I think that uh, the youth participation is very important. They need to be able to say what they think about various things and what they could do all together. If we communicate, we can share things which you might never think of and which still are very useful and can be useful every, for everyone. Now, as to the organization of the parliaments, I don't think it is necessary to tell the story of its genesis, but uh, when you have free time, you just uh, contact me and I will tell you all you want. I'm really very grateful to see so many people involved in this. And uh, it is very good to know that so many young people are really concerned by what Europe will become by 2050. Thank you, Isabel Goldberg. That is Participation Europe 2050. The next speech will be on Czech and Austrian cooperation between the region of Tabor uh, with an Austrian school. I have several names, uh, Susan Kiplinger, Lukasz Kolasz, Anna Kolbergova, uh, Kristina Yurkovska, I hope they are present, and I would like to ask their representative to come up to the microphone to tell us how, uh, uh, what the cooperation between the private uh, uh, secondary school of uh, Tabor and the Austrian school looks like. Thank you. Europe, our common house. Uh, this is the metaphor that uh, the two secondary schools took up uh, between Tabor and Rohrbach for their project in on the topic of uh, 2050 Europe. But it wasn't about uh, to uh, about occupying the basic states, but uh, rather attaching. Uh, uh, real values or visions for the future as we see them as uh, the students. This was our task to work through in the metaphor on the example of living in a house. Everyone got their own room and uh, to uh, describe uh, the functions and the best uh, works uh, were taken as a house on many uh, of many rooms to be put on the map of Europe uh, technological progress uh, cultural diversity for freedom of uh, <coughs> religion were uh, the main topics I personally think that uh, the key to good future in Europe is cooperation between countries. One of the main topics is the environment. Uh, the high level of science can be taken up uh, that should uh, make our lives easier and we should think of how to move on in Europe. Uh, the ladies and gentlemen, my name is Susanna Keplinger. I'm 13 years old and I'm from Austria. 
just like about 400 other students at the grammar schools in Rohrbach in Austria and in Tabor in the Czech Republic. I've been part of the project Common House Europe, which has been sub submitted to the art competition Europe I Want to Live In. Because of the intensive occupation with European values and the political implementation throughout the project, I have come to realize how many rights and liberties we as citizens of the European Union can enjoy and that I had taken them for granted before. I also owe my increased European awareness to a great extent to the work on our art project. And I've learned that political achievements don't come naturally. The commitment to European values and all overall European awareness and the will and effort to preserve and develop them further are of fundamental importance. Many European goals haven't been reached yet or are even undermined before their implementation. For me, the concept of courageous citizen participa participation is essential to lead the European integration process in the right direction. The European Union is still far away from what it could or should be, but I think the path led by European values is the right one to follow. There are so many areas in which the European Union defines our lives in a way that has guaranteed peace for many decades. The, me the democratic form of government, the rule of law and the separation of powers are only three of the conditions for becoming a part of the European Union. Freedom of religion and sexual orientation, freedom of expression, freedom to travel or the mutual support in time of crisis, the implementation of them all and many more have improved our lives considerably. And when I look at the Ukraine or Iran today, then I'm thankful to live in such a solitary community of states. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> So, thank you. Uh, there's so far about the cooperation between the secondary school of Tabor and uh, one in uh, Austria, Susanna Kiplinger, uh, Kristina Jurkowska, and others spoke. Now we can move over to declaring the results of the competition in decorative art on the topic of Europe I want to live in by 2015. Now, uh, the prizes are being prepared for the victors, for the winners. The part, um, there are categories under uh, 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 19 years and above. The European Decorative Arts Show on the topic the Europe I want to live in. The um, prizes will be handed over by Pavel Storkan, Teresa Plutkova from the Czech centers on behalf of the pedagogical faculty of uh, Charles University, Professor Marie, Maria Fulkova. Welcome. Yes, a round of applause, of course. And as soon as we are prepared, uh, the watch says that we have one minute past 11. So we are nearly punctual. And the first uh, category, diplomas for the decorative arts. Before, however, we start the process, I will ask uh, Professor Maria Fulkova from the Pedagogical Faculty of Charles University to come up and to tell us a few words on this category. Please, the floor is yours. And let's welcome her with a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, audience, dear guests, it is a big honor for me to say a few words on behalf of the commission that was uh, uh, evaluating. Our task was a very difficult one. 
because uh, we got a big number, an immense number of letters. It was uh, clearly seen that uh, the authors that expressed their view in a decorative way are following two main branches of views. First, uh, children and young authors are big, are very optimistic. The European values that uh, uh, was mentioned by one of the students here is are also reflected in uh, the pictures, um, it's a big passion for living in a good environment, in a good family, in a beautiful house, and in uh, a good society. I think that the young uh, decorative artists uh, uh, imagined or thought of the people they knew and uh, they have around them. And that was their uh, idea back in 1950s, too. Then there was a big wish to solve where their house or their family will be. Here there were some differences and uh, indeed concerns and uh, fears for Europe. It was global type of thinking, which was uh, rather pessimistic in terms of what will happen in, uh, to Europe and the whole world in 2050. Yeah, the, the was, uh, they, they didn't really think as Pragovites or inhabitants of small villages. They only see, saw themselves as global citizens. Such ideas were present, and uh, the fear could be really observed. We only hope that these questions will become so uh, important that uh, those people who work in government and uh, in executive uh, posts uh, will take it into consideration. And there was this third group of works showing that it will probably be technologies that will get us from the situation, out from the situation. Uh, there were many futuristic visions. We also could see in the pictures a good knowledge of uh, the ex way of expressing views uh, through film or video, which we saw on the internet. On the whole, I could say that uh, this uh, part sounded more optimistically, but calling for something to happen. I now have the honor to tell you about that. And if it's possible, I will ask the organizers of the competition. Well, I'm not quite sure whether you can see the video on the website. So there was uh, a number of multimedia work, and uh, we were really uh, very much attracted to uh, the uh, jokes and uh, ways of making fun. And uh, they extended to uh, seriously meant uh, uh, works on maybe quality of water or air, or they also uh, met people and interviewed them in the school, uh, in uh, the street. So please look through those short films. Thank you, thank you for the introduction to what was uh, uh, evaluated. And we shall see some of the films of pictures. So that was uh, Professor Maria Fulkova from the Pedagogical Faculty of the Charles University. Now, uh, the prizes will be handed over. In the first category, 
four children under ten. If you hear your name, please come up and get your prize. So it's under ten. Donitola Dvořáková. It will end as it ends uh, from uh, the um, basic uh, art school on how we can see uh, the, the European cities. Can it happen that we will uh, watch uh, the fall tower from a steamboat? Okay, Helena Steklačová, the name is uh, Loss and Hope from Havlíčkova Borova, Rosalie Andronska, Sofie Brožova, Liliana Hrbkova, Dalvan Khan, Matěj Polák, Nela Putová, Eliška Zdenková from the uh, Basic Art School from Sokolov. Now, the name of uh, the work is Faith. So, can you please come? Let's take over the prize, prizes uh, uh, to characterize uh, the words. Helena Steklačová drew uh, loss and hope from uh, the art school of Havlíčková Borová. People brought Europe to losses, but what they expect is hope for a better world. And the pupils from uh, uh, from Sokolov decided that uh, peace will be the name of their work. They want uh, to have good relations between people uh, in 2050 and to have peace among them. Among the people, there is a, a, a flower interwoven. That's the category under 10 years. Thank you. Once again, round of applause to all the participants. Now the category 10 to 15, Linda Sklenářová. Her piece of work is titled The Place I Love. She is from the uh, Stefanikova uh, uh, Elementary School. Then uh, Inda Stepankova, Abeata Belerova, the housing of the future from Yichin, from the artistic school of Yichin. You are kindly requested to come and take the uh, award. Now, a few details about the works. Linda Sklenářová made a drawing of a place which she lives. She is uh, a pupil of the uh, artistic school in Zlim, and this is the place where she lives in the village. She uh, observes unobserved from a tree. Katerina Selačková uh, drew a cultural center. She is from Komuto, from the artistic school. And Beata Belerová, uh, the uh, work is titled Housing of the Future. Future, she is from the artistic school of uh, Novi Yichin. So, housing of the future, uh, surrounded by greenery, safe and looking in greenery. And photograph of the three winners in the category. Thank you. Now the category 15 to 19 years. Martin Pikna, a research laboratory. He is from Bystrice pod Hostinem, again, an artistic school. The artistic school. Lucie Skořepová, Europe 2050 is the title of her work and she is from the Design Artistic School 
in Lisa nad Labem. So these are the two awards, two laureates of the category of between 15 and 19 years of age. Martin Pikna, the research laboratory, the uh, basic artistic school, um, and it is about the uh, search and uh, searching and finding for new sources of energy. Lucie Skorepova, Europe 2050, the um, grammar uh, design grammar school, uh, and these are illustrations. Uh, uh, in the form of letters, each of them standing for one of the issues, one of the challenges Europe will have to face. And you can compose and recompose uh, the letters, and it always uh, stands for a certain problem. So, this, these were the laureates of the category 15 to 19. Now we have the category 19 plus. Jessica Mosgova is the winner. Uh, it will be the way you will want it. Jessica is not here, but we can see her work later. Now we will proceed to the audio-video Europe 2050 category. And here we have a Romanian representative, the category age uh, 15 uh, to 19, and the, uh, uh, the work is titled Future in Metasta, uh, Metasco, uh, and you could hear the names. Is the a representative of Romania uh, who would come and uh, take the, the awards? So, it will be one of the videos which were mentioned by the uh, president of the jury, by the chairman of, of the jury. So, once again, it's the Romanian team um, in the category 15 to 19 years of age. Uh, if you uh, want uh, something to say, now it's uh, your time. First of all, thank you for the award and thank everyone for being here. I believe that everyone is here because we care. We care about us, we care about the people around us, and we care about the future, and especially the present. The Europe of 2050 is for each of us, even through I maybe think different of the way it will work, and you may be thinking different about the way we, we it work. I think Europe of 2050, for each of us, we are looking at the same point, a sphere in which of us we live. I 
když se někteří koukáme Some of you Evropu, jinak nakonec look, ten společný, uh, have a different perspective of Europe, that's true, that's true, but we will all come to, the, well, <laughs> that was the translation of the translation, sorry. Thank you, thank you, the, the, thank you, the awarded uh, team. This is the Romanian uh, team, 15 to 19. Now we have the category of uh, up, up to uh, 15, and we have a representative of Lesbos from Greece. So it is primary school Moria Lesbos and uh, we have the delegation Palacie Christofina, the representative of the creative group and Marian Kipmarki and also the director of the school Mariana Ruoli. It's one of the parents and uh, she is also a teacher and Patajos Patasaris. Sorry for mispronouncing the names. We haven't got them. Uh, we don't have the, 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 the written list. So I would like to invite those whom I've mentioned to kindly come up and take the uh, take the um, awards. So Variamis Estatios, a pupil of the fifth form, Takedi Panagoyota. Sorry, I will not try to uh, pronounce it. These are pupils of the uh, fifth and sixth form of the elementary school. You hear the names. Then there are three teachers who helped the students with some technical details and who also supported them and gave them practical advice. Once again, if you want to say a few words, I Thank you. We are very grateful to be here today with you. We come for, from a very, very small island and a very, very small primary school. It's in Lesbos, the name. It's in the eastern part of, uh, northern eastern part of Greece. Our school became known, actually the name of the school became known, Moria School, because of the refugees and the camp which is near our school. But we wanted to, through this video to show that we have um, more things to show, not only despair and um, something bad. And that's why we made this uh, video for Europe 2050, because we don't want these children to live alone without their parents um, live in a camp in these conditions. And Christofina will tell you a few words of the video. Our only hope is peace. Yes, we believe that our only hope is peace. It's the end of our video, and uh, I think it's the title. Yes, the message. Thank you. <laughs> Tak tahle ta delegace pochází z ostrova Lesbos. So, it is again the translation of what's been translated. I will not repeat it. Nemohou být s nimi, ale i když tohle to všechno zní jako velice zoufalá věc, tak jejich hlavním poselstvím tady toho videa je ukázat so once again, naději, I repeat the message 
The message is hope, and uh, while the name of the place at the, uh, on the island, uh, Moria, is associated with the refugees camp, we also want to show something positive. Thank you very much, and uh, the Greek team receives a round of applause. No a nyní máme další, další skvělé zahraniční hosty. Jejich dílo se We also have some more guests from abroad, Houses of the Future, and these guests arrived from Spain, and it's Marcos Sandoval Diaz, Sofia, and Maria Candida Hernandez. They are the pedagogists. Once again, I apologize for mispronouncing the names. So, the Spanish delegation will take the award, Houses of the Future. Tak opět přijdu s mikrofonem, aby jsme měli možnost také I will, se poslechnout. When the uh, handing of, of, the, of the awards is over, I'll come again and uh, I will pass the floor on them, hoping that they will say a few words about uh, the houses, the houses which we can be looking forward for uh, at 2050 and which hopefully will be available not just in Spain but across Europe. Hello, my name is Sofia and uh, we are from the Torrente Ballester in Spain, Madrid. And one of your questions, it can be why we choose this stem. When we were told about the project, our class decided to work in small groups. We choose to work with friends we get along with. Then we wrote on the board different topics such as European education in 2050, health, transport, and infrastructures. Our group chose infrastructures because we had fun thinking and imagining futuristic materials, forms, and furniture for buildings. We put our ideas together and started sketching. It was difficult to decide and agree on the final idea until we agreed on the building we have just present. We would like our project to be considered in the construction of future buildings so our generation could enjoy advances that we hope will happen one day. Hi, my name is Luis and you and Europe is a great continent, but how will we in the future? Well we believe that Europe in the future is going to be a continent with renewable energies like wind power, hydroelectric power or solar power. Sustainable materials and very advanced technology will be used as well. In the Iberian Peninsula, the place where we live, there are many hours of sun and we believe that this non-polluting energy can be used. The future cities will have buildings which will be made entirely of sustainable materials that forms according to natural shapes. We think that it's very important that our government invests money in education and training the young generations so we can investigate and innovate. We are also worried about climatic change, but we, will, but we hope that does empower ta will take the necessary measures to solve the problem. Hi, my name is Marcos, and finally we want to tell you, you a message. The message is, nowadays people only think in the present without considering the future. We are concerned how we will live in the next years and in what continents we will have to enjoy our children. Uh, it's, important, it's important the caring for the environment and the content shared to live in the better world.
Tak já v téhle té chvíli děkuji všem autorům a zároveň mluvčím Sofii, Luisovi a Markosovi, kteří sice odchází, ale já požádám o stručný překlad toho, jaké vidí rok 2050 tito mladí jedinci. Tak já bych dodala, že Sofie popisovala vlastně to, jak celý ten projekt vzniknul, že to byla vlastně sparta spolužáků, kamarádů, kteří kteří pracovali v malých skupinkách, bylo pro ně těžké se shodnout na tom finálním návrhu, protože jich měli hodně, ale nakonec to, co uvidíte, tak je jejich představa o ideálním bydlení, jak oni si představují, že by se v Evropě 2050 mohlo bydlet, jak oni by chtěli bydlet a co by byli rádi, aby se zohlednilo do budoucna. Luis mluvil o tom, jak by bylo důležité se soustředit na obnovitelné zdroje a udržitelné materiály i právě při výrobě, například při konstrukci domů. A taky na, zohlednil, jak je důležité věnovat pozornost klimatickým změnám. A Markos pak zmiňoval to, že i když většinou při myšlence na budoucnost většinu z nás má depresivní myšlenky a říkáme si, že je to něco hrozného, takže tam pořád je také naděje, kterou musíme vidět. Děkuji za překlad. No a nyní budeme předávat zvláštní ocenění poroty video. Je to v kategorii 15 až 19 let a zvláštní ocenění bude putovat na Slovensko. Andrea Kováč a vedoucí práce magistra Mariana Dubajová. Název díla Voda o vodě a je to absolventská výtvarná práce. Tak já poprosím zástupce ze Slovenska, kdyby mohli přijít, už jsou tady. Andrea Kováč a vedoucí práce magistra Mária Dubajová díla, dílo Voda o vodě, absolventská výtvarná práce, podpora scénického výtvarnictva Sklenárova 7 Bratislava, to je adresa, a to video, které bylo oceněno, pojednává o environmentální problematice, o devastujícím vývoji vody a přírody v životě člověka. Poprosím opět o pár slov. Zdravím teda. Uh, chcel by som povedať iba toľko k tomu, že pokiaľ, pokiaľ si ako ľudia uvedomíme, uvedomíme dôležitosť kvapky vody, vody, pochopíme zmene klímy a chcel by som povedať, že ešte je tu na to čas a ten čas sa veľmi rýchlo kráti, čiže si myslím, že musíme začať konať preto, lebo Pokiaľ necháme situáciu v takú, aká je teraz, tak môžu nastať naozaj momenty, ktoré sú veľmi blízko tým zlým scenárom, ktoré si ako ľudstvo predstavujeme. Děkujeme. Tak nyní se předávají tedy ceny ocenění a diplomy, zvláštní ocenění poroty za video, které putuje na Slovensku. These awards go to Slovakia for uh, water about water. Peace. Once again, thank you, Slovakia, the 15 to 19 category, Andrea Kovac and the head of his work, Maria Dubajova. Thank you. Next special award by the jury for representatives of the Czech Republic. Again, it's a 15 to 19 years category. Zuzana Dubova and the work has the name Who Are We? It's from uh, the 
primary uh, artistic school of Uherské hradiště and Jachim Hudyspor, John Dijol, the elementary artistic school of Setin. Zuzana Dubova, I can see her. Is Jachim Blizňák here with us? I ask him to come up. From what we have in our materials, I will on who we are or happiness. It's a short film shot by uh, the students and it shows uh, a report on uh, uh, citizens of the city passing by. And they ask, ask the question, what happiness means? Are the people satisfied with their life? Uh, surprisingly, that uh, substance of life is uh, more important than the status quo. I will wait for the award to be handed over, and then I will give the floor to Zuzana Dubova. It will be highly interesting to find out what people imagine under of uh, the uh, concept of being lucky or being happy. So, here's the microphone. Thank you for the invitation. I'm here to represent my students. They aren't with us today, but uh, through the stream, I greet them all. They are students of a film in Uherské uh, Hradiště. It's a new subject. I, in fact, founded it in the artistic school two years ago. We have, I have great students who are able to shoot a short uh, report or a, sh a short film. What they in really shot were uh, the speeches by passers-by in the town of Herské Hradiště. The, the people were asked the question, what happiness means to them? No one actually said that it's a social status or money. They rather spoke of normal moments in the life uh, of friends or the family which can create a happy life. One gentleman who was passing by, he was a tourist from Poland, he said that uh, a human being should not be tied or chained anywhere. And I want to thank the students, Martina Kashna, Matthias Unz, Krzysztof Mraz and Aris Hitkova. They are uh, the ones uh, who shot uh, and uh, edited the film. Thank you. Thank you for interesting definitions of happiness. I heard one. Uh, happiness is when you pass by a, a shopping mall, but you do not go there because you do not need anything. You go past a pharmacy, but never enter it because you need no drugs, and you go home where um, uh, family awaits you. We spoke of videos, but saw none so far, but you will be able to look to watch them. Mr. Storkan will tell us. Ah, in the afternoon, you'll have the possibility to see the drawings. The opening is at uh, 4, and you have a possibility to see the video since tomorrow. They will be made available in uh, the uh, Europe 2050 site. There were very interesting contributions, and we were quite surprised by the quality of the video shots. Uh, since tomorrow, it will be seen. It will be seen on Europe 20. 50.eu. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And we will now move over to evaluation of uh, regional 
shows uh, or exhibitions. Uh, we shall start with the region of Liberec. Is it so? Oh, yes. First, we go to cross-border cooperation. I should have it on my list. Okay, on the award for cooperation in the work performed by the secondary school of school of Tabor and of Austria, can a representative move to us to uh, collect the diploma? The private uh, secondary school of uh, Tabor. Let's applaud them. And I can see now that um, the colleague has uh, her diploma now. Can you say something about uh, the, the work? Now, the spokesman? Well, I must confess quite frankly that I cannot remember too much. My drawing was uh, not really the best one. Maybe Anna could tell us more about hers work, about her work. Well, she is shy, but uh, still, may I have a round of applause for her, because her drawing was really beautiful. OK, we learned the main thing. It was beautiful. And we can see the next uh, spokesman, the future spokesman. Well, uh, good show, young man. And then the award for the cooperation, the cross-board cooperation. That was between uh, uh, Tabor and Austria. A uh, professor. Just a little, okay. Uh, okay. First, I want to apologize for my really bad English, but I try my best. Um, I think uh, the uh, students uh, before said everything what was to say. I just want to thank, um, say thanks to about 400 students in Austria and in Czech who worked on this uh, on this uh, project. Thank you very much. Okay. Now it will be translated. Well, the same goes in Czech. Okay, thank you. It's the um, Tabor Secondary School and the school from Austria who collected their diplomas for this uh, work that made its contribution to the Europe 2050, how young people want to see Europe in the future. Now, we can move over to the regional exhibitions. Is it so? So let's start with the region of Liberec. There are 13 participants there. If they are with us, uh, I will now say the, I will now quote the names. Uh, if you are here, please join us here. Berenika Svata, Lucia Hanušová, Jakub Šulc, Amalie Bolková, Vendula Štalcová, Zuzana Roškotová, Kateřina Mainlová, Aneška Klimečková, Aleksandr Petrka, Jan Hejlek, Monika Braunerová, Etela Milčáková and Eliška Dolemanská. These are uh, this is the team of uh, those who were awarded uh, for the exhibition. Thirteen participants came. 
we can only see the accompanying persons so far. Uh, which schools took part? It was a, a vocational school from Yablonets nad Nisou, an artistic school and vocational school from Turnov, a vocational school from Yablonets nad Nisou, a glass vocational school from Novi Bor. Uh, the glass may maker school from Jelezny Brod and another uh, vocational school on glass from Kamenitsky Shanov. The categories were 3D works, uh, objects, uh, 2D works, uh, uh, drawing, uh, a jewel, and the award of the jury. Uh, the auspice, uh, it all went under the auspices of uh, the Glassmaker Odyssey. Uh, it was a competition declared uh, under the auspices of uh, the governor of the region, Martin Puta. And the show was made out of the works of glass um, objects and jewels. May I say a few words on the regional uh, exhibition? In the Czech Republic, we decided, together with some cities or regions, that we are going to run uh, regional activities. I am glad that uh, those came into existence. More students could take part. And really, the Glassmaker Odyssey was a special thing to happen. They, it was composed of work, works that uh, were shot in uh, uh, this glassmakers region. And there are so many sectors there. This is a future jewel maker. I am glad that uh, there are several, of represent several representatives uh, from the school. Well, the gentlemen remained back in behind. Our teachers should also, uh, they also deserve applause. It's really about the fact that the future uh, creators uh, will take after their uh, models and mentors or teachers. And I'll give the floor to one of uh, the young artisans. I thank everybody for being able to be here. I thank uh, my uh, colleagues, students, and um, teachers. I hope that if we continue on the same track, we'll be able to achieve the world we uh, described or depicted in our works. And we can really expect a promising and good future. Thank you. I hope to see your jewels and uh, galleries in the future, and you will save money to be able to buy them. And if we have representatives from the Liberec region or the regional gallery of Liberec, there should be one. We also want to present another award because we decided it's not only about the works shown, but also about the institutions who work with us. Uh, the Liberec region received the award for this year the, for the best uh, regional project in Europe 2050 project. The Regional Gallery is an exceptional institution who worked with us and provided us with the uh, good uh, environment. Uh, we could run a good opening ceremony. So we gave them the award for the Partner of the Year of Europe 2050 project. Thank you, Madam Director. I hope, I am glad that we have a, a glassmaker who, does, who makes jewels. No, 
Well, I uh, produce, I'm uh, rather a goldsmith because I produce jewels. But the topic here is what will Europe look like in 2050? If you look from uh, the point of view, can you imagine yourself as a jewel maker in 2050? And in what post? Well, I am able to imagine I would like to set up my own business and will try to express the world in jewels, the global problems and the ones that should be discussed uh, can be reflected in them, uh, not only in books or films or pictures, but also in jewels. Were there jewel makers who are uh, there were people who worked on their piece of work for decades? Uh, can you imagine such an object that you would spend? Uh, years and years upon. Well, I can't imagine what will the continuation be, but uh, at least I'm going to try. Okay, so let inspiration be with you. And we, hope, we are looking forward to beautiful jewels uh, from your workshop. So once again, an applause. Ah, now we go on. The Moravian and Silesian region names Sara Bobzikova, 11 years. I wish uh, much water. Uh, she is from Zabrzech. Linda Strychova, nine, uh, 10 years. Uh, statues in the streets of Prague. Uh, it's uh, in High in Silesia. And Kral uh, Shaitarova, uh, a communion school in Studenka. The award of the, by the organization Petra Kvita, uh, Zdeněk Burian Basic School in Kopřivnice. It was for the Moravian and Silesian region. And we used uh, the work as uh, uh, the object uh, to symbolize the program and uh, under whose auspices it happened. Uh, it was the regional uh, show of the Moravian Silesian uh, region. Uh, it was declared uh, uh, with the uh, support uh, and, uh, of Tomasz Kotyza, director of uh, uh, regional museum. And uh, the show was organized uh, by the students uh, with the works of uh, students of Moravian and Silesian region. Slovo paní ředitelce, aby k tomu řekla také několik slov. V podstatě umělci, já budu to, používat to slovo umělci, protože jste umělci, těchto regionálních přehlídek už dostali diplomy, ocením jim dáváme čestná uznání vlastně za to, že se zapojili do toho projektu. Moc jsme chtěli, aby vítězové regionálních kol byly vidět v rámci celé Evropy, protože si myslím, že si to zaslouží ty jejich práce. Bohužel každá škola mohla zaslat pouze jedno dílo od jednoho studenta do evropské části, takže jsme velice rádi, že v těch regionálních kolech vás bylo dobře vidět a ty práce byly krásné. A zároveň jsme teda udělili i partnerské uznání, že jsme uznali za spolupráci projektu Združení Můza z Moravského kraje, které v podstatě, pokud je tady zástupce, velmi bych ho přivítala, protože vlastně tato organizace je organizací základních uměleckých škol Moravského kraje a oni tu výstavu připravili a byla velice krásná. Takže já teď bych předala slovo tady umělkyním. Jak jste s projektem to znaložili? Ne, dobře, nebudeme nutit. Já předám mikrofon. Tak my předáme samozřejmě diplomy, nebo ty už jsou předány. Za vašeho potlesku tedy odchází zpět do publika. A jdeme ke kraji, který se jmenuje Praha. Hodnocení proběhlo v těchto věkových kategoriích do 10 let, 10 až 15 let a 15 až 19 let. Oceněnými jsou Otakar Vimr, Jabkup Adhon, Ludmila Hřebíčková, David Wild, 
Ondřej Vrána, Jakub Nerad, Jan Jáchym Šroubek, Anna Metelková, Lola Miller, Alexandra Poláková, Natálie Řeháková, Alena Kotová a Martin Šubert. Já bych je požádal, kdyby přišli sem k nám pro ocenění. Někteří už jdou za vašeho potlesku. Děkujeme. No a doplním, že regionální umělecká přehlídka hlavního města Prahy, Evropa, ve které chci žít, Praha v roce 2050, která byla vyhlášena za podpory hlavního města Prahy pod záštitou Mariany Čapkové. Tak čestné uznání za spolupráci v rámci projektu Evropa 2050 patří také základní umělecké škole Jana Hanuše z Prahy 6. Tak předávají se diplomy a další záležitosti, které jsou pro umělce připravené. Je tu fotografie a já opět předám slovo paní ředitelce, aby nám řekla také několik slov o Praze. Tak Praha je vlastně specifická tím, že je naším hlavním městem a jsem velice ráda, že v podstatě za podpory vlastně magistrátu mohla proběhnout. A zároveň bych velmi ráda pozvala na, tady na, na to naše pódium vedle těch umělců pana ředitele Tenglera z základní městské školy Jana Hanuše. Měl by tady být. Pokud se tady objevil. Ne, máme tady zástupce za pana ředitele. Mohu představit. Stanislava Bradová. Takže paní magistro, v podstatě vám předám ocenění za školu, která nám tady v Praze velmi pomohla s podporou celého toho projektu, který jsme tady realizovali a ještě dnes na verný sáži. A v podstatě na společenském setkání partnerů budou vaši studenti předvádět své muzikální umění. My jsme sice výtvarnou aktivitou a vlastně takovou umělecky zaměřenou právě na ta videa a tak dále, ale hudbě dáváme pro prostor a my se na ně velice těšíme a velice děkujeme za spolupráci, kterou jste nám v letošním roce pomohli. Tak jestli mohu, abyste si udělali všichni hromadné foto. Samozřejmě. Tak já děkuji. Teď hromadná fotografie všech autorů. Já se možná těch nejmenších zeptám a zatím o tom můžete případně přemýšlet. Když se řekne rok 2050, je to šíleně daleko. Ale jak se vidíte v tom roce 2050, co byste chtěli dělat, až budete dospělí? Čím třeba byste se chtěli živit a jak by měl vypadat váš život? Dokázali byste odpovědět na Tuhle otázku? Tak jenom chvilku jukneme na fotografii. Tak a teď jenom, co byste chtěli dělat v tom roce 2050, když je to šíleně daleko? No to, to já ještě nevím. Fakt nemáš nejmenší ponětí. A čím bys chtěl být? To je taková častá otázka, kterou každý z nás, tátové, dědové, všichni dostáváme, když jsme byli v tvém věku. Čím bys chtěl být? Když to? Ne. Nevíš. Dobře děláš. A ty? A já bych asi chtěla být ilustrátorkou. Děkujeme za zcela jasnou odpověď, ať se to tedy naplní a hlavně ať v tom životě probíhá to, o čem jsme tady mluvili a to je štěstí. Ještě jednou děkuji všem zástupcům Prahy. Váš potlesk je odměňuje také. A je tu Královéhradecký kraj, opět začnu zástupcem úřadu, paní Miklíčková by tady s námi měla být, tak ji poprosím také, kdyby přišla k nám a ocenění Ilona Bojko, Martina Pavlíčková, Alex Hejlek, Magdalena Hýblová, Aneta Špásová, Tereza Kopecká, Nela Hovátková, Rozálie Cvrkalová a Krištof Vytvar. Pokud jste tady, pojďte prosím k nám, už přicházejí, opět leskáme. A já možná zmíním tentokrát texty u jednotlivých prací od žáků a studentů. Evropa se mění hlavně v architektuře, začnou se víc využívat materiály šetrné k přírodě. Všechny budovy budou používat přírodní zdroje ke své udržitelnosti. Cestování bude mít novou formu, nově se bude létat bez 
mezi planetami běžně jako dnes mezi městy k cestování se bude využívat létající auto. Návrh pro změny, co má vést k lepší situaci na planetě. Tento obraz má znázorňovat také hrůzu, chaos a zmatek, ke kterému dojde, když se nezačneme chovat šetrněji k přírodě. Znázorňuje město ve válce zničenou přírodu za městě. To všechno způsobily biologické zbraně. A takhle bych mohl pokračovat dál. Opět ke králové hradeckému kraji pan Štorkán řekne něco. Dobře. Tak já úplně krátce, já bych hlavně tady kolegyně Nikličko chtěl poděkovat z Králového radeckého kraje, protože už spolupracujeme několikátým rokem, tak spíš nechám slovo jí. Tak já tady taky poděkuju, poděkuju všem studentům a žákům z Královéhradeckého kraje, které, kteří se do soutěže přihlásili. Zároveň děkuji organizátorům, že vůbec můžeme se účastnit a věřím, že v příštím roce bude studentů a žáků ještě víc, než bylo letos. Děkuji. Já také děkuji, všechno je předáno, takže blahopřejeme. A teď nás čekají už poslední dvě kategorie a to jsou města. Nejprve město Kladno a za město Kladno by měly přijet Marie Anna Krejčí, Adéla Hanušová a Jakub Zvoníček. Pokud jsou tady, pojďte tedy mezi nás. A už přicházejí za vašeho potlesku. Děkuji. Alespoň jedna zástupkyně. Já ještě... Několik slov o městě Kladně, Evropa, ve které chci žít, Evropa v roce 2050, která se konala pod záštitou Petry Melčové. A teď už má slovo opět paní ředitelka. No a já bych tady ráda pozvala zástupce městské knihovny Kladno, protože v podstatě Kladno s náma spolupracuje taky dlouhodobě a my jsme taky se rozhodli, že udáme čestné uznání v rámci podpory a spolupráce tohoto projektu právě knihovně. To je taky jeden z důvodů, že vlastně chceme ukázat, že ty aktivity, které děláme v rámci projektu Evropa 2050 v regionech, můžete dělat ve školách, může se dělat v knihovnách, v podstatě ve spolupráci s městskými úřady. A myslím si, že to je přesně ta cesta, která by měla vést, aby ta dnešní mladá generace, to znamená žáci, studenti, děti a a vlastně už skoro dospělí, si hledali místa, kde mohou přednášet ty svoje představy o té, tom svém životě, co by chtěli v těch regionech měnit. A k tomu právě slouží tyto instituce. On display. And this will show to you uh, who are those with whom you can associate in 2023. Not many students around no no it's a small student who's here and uh, there is a question can I ask do you have an idea what would you like to do when you're big in 2050 I want to be a kindergarten teacher that's great we will need a lot of those like you And we have Kralupy, the town of Kralupy nad Vltavou. We have Vanessa Loutanova, Alenka Pitsnarova, and Lukáš Moravec, a teacher, and Laura Markalová, and David Vigisali, representatives of uh, uh, pupils who participated in creating and putting together the video because it, this is the category of video. The town Kralupy nad Vltavou, you know where I want to live. live. Uh, uh, Libor Lesák is the mayor of the town and uh, we will introduce and present the best uh, urban project or urban project. Yeah. So we have uh, a representative of the uh, Kralupy municipality, if he or she is present, uh, would he or she like to say a few words? Yes, you are here. There is something I want to betray. We choose you, we've chosen you, because you did uh, one activity which is not very frequent, and we would like 
to point at it because it would be a good example for others to follow. You invited the pupils to uh, to the municipal uh, uh, to, to the municipality uh, to the town hall. Well, it was not really town really the town hall. It was the cinema, and uh, we actually try to explain to them what the urban plan is and how the strategy of an urban development uh, is conceived and uh, what needs to be there and how the process of, pro of approval uh, proceeds, how the documents are prepared, how the uh, tenders are called for. So it is an entire process which is very complicated and we wanted them to understand it. The amazing thing was that after about 30 minutes or perhaps even more uh, of explanation, we had a two hours discussion with the children of the elementary school and uh, they had amazing questions. Uh, uh, to us. They were so very much interested. They wanted to know what the development of the town would be in the future. They wanted to know about transport, about the problems of parking, about uh, the environment, about the greenery, about the possibilities of spending the leisure time in the town. So it was uh, quite amazing for us to see the young, very young children, uh, uh, so interesting, so interested, so inquisitive to learn more about the future of the town where they live. It was really very inspiring for all the participants. Thank you. And you've been inspiring for us and for all. So, dear pupils, I have a moderator who will ask the right question. I will try. We spoke about the town of Kralupy nad Vltavou. If you say so, most of us see this huge factory, chemical factory. Would you like to see that in the future? Or what do you think would be the chief characterization of the town after all those many years? What do you think? What I would like is more factories, but the factories of the future, not more smog. But I think that the town should retain its, uh, its reputation of an industrial town. I would like more greenery and I would like it to be cleaner. I will reminisce a little bit. I came to the Apprentice Training Center in 2002, and that was the year of the huge inundations. And uh, at that time, the town had very bad renown, very bad reputation. It was dirty, it was polluted, but a lot has changed since. And I think that if it goes on like that, we needn't be uh, afraid of the year 2050 because it's greener now. And uh, yes, you still see those uh, uh, huge uh, uh, stacks uh, and chimneys, but it's not polluting any longer. Thank you very much. Very much. Uh, Kralupy really is an industrial town, but we can see the modern factories, and it may not be bad at all if it is surrounded by the greenery and all that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the, I want to see more greenery in Kralope, and I hope that it will be a lovely and a colorful town. That's my vision for 2050. That was, ah, that was perfectly resumed, perfectly ah, finished. Now, this 
is the end of it almost, but there is still one category, and I pass the mic. As to the rules, the schools were entitled to send just one piece of art to the European um, uh, level, but there was one school who, uh, which didn't want to be discouraged, and they did something that is really grand. It's a Moravian school, a grammar school, and I want to thank for the work with students. Don't be shy. The prize for the most active school within the project of Europe 2050 is to be bestowed on you. You were really extremely active and magnanimous in doing this work. Can you tell us you're the teacher and you teach several disciplines. So in which disciplines uh, uh, did the students work? My name is Barbara Chernochova and I represent the Moravian Grammar School of Olomouc. These are students of the discipline graphic design and uh, the exhibition and uh, sonography and uh, uh, also the arrangement. Uh, actually, the, un the entire school was um, given the possibility of participating in the project and I want to thank the management of the school because they made it possible for us to participate in all that. There's yet another piece of information, perhaps you know it. Every year we uh, prepare a virtual round of all those works that passed the European tour and I hope that a part of the virtual show will be focused on your school and uh, I thank you very much. Any of the students who would like to say something? I think that since this is the special award, the last award, uh, which is given to the most active school, we could perhaps ask one of the students to tell us something. If we who don't live in Olomouc are asked about Olomouc, we obviously figure out the historical buildings, the churches, and uh, of course uh, uh, we think about the special cheese which carries the name of Olomouc and which is worldwide uh, known. So, but if, if we say Olomouc 2050, what would you like people to figure out? We have the spokesperson. I would like to say that people shouldn't see. Uh, it would be nice if people uh, figured out Olomouc as a beautiful historical town which is really worth visiting. So if you don't know about any other um, uh, goal of your trip, why not go there? And this brings us to the final and we will launch a new edition of the competition 2023 uh, uh, and again it's Europe 2050. Eva Nitrova will uh, declare what the topic is. Thank you. Before I present the vision of the year for the year 2023, uh, I want to ask whether Petr Kvita is not here from the town of Kopřivnice. No, he's not there. So, I want to congratulate you all. I want to thank you very much for your approach to this year's edition. And as previously said by Mrs. 
Vildova. This was a project which was difficult to uh, to put together, but it is a success, and you will see, and that's in uh, that's at four. Uh, PM, uh, there will be the first show, the vernissage, and uh, you will see uh, the awarded uh, topic. So the king is dead. Long live the king. So this is the end, and uh, we will obviously still work on the results. And I will be very much looking forward for the next year. Uh, the Olomouc School uh, invited you to Olomouc to see uh, this beautiful town yourselves. For the year 23, we've prepared the topic, my region, a part of Europe 2050. We enlarged it a little bit because it is very complicated for the individual categories uh, to, to, to make the artistic assessment of the individual categories because it's very multivaried. Obviously, the artistic jury tends to look at the artistic side of it, but at the same time, we want students and the pupils to show what they want to improve in the region and in Europe. So, for the art category, we uh, next to the art category, we added the, another category called project or design and uh, it's up up to you now to find those places or spots which you would like to improve which in your opinion would contribute to Europe being a more beautiful place to live and then there is obviously the video category which is very popular and I think that it will be very popular My region as the part of the Europe 2050 jigsaw puzzle. Oh, you should show what uh, it is uh, that you enrich uh, Europe by. There are different people living in different regions. They have different um, stories in their history. So they will be able and keen on inviting people to their region. So it will be up to you to say whether it's architecture, whether it's history, whether it's uh, social responsibility. And starting the 1st of January on uh, the Triple W uh, Europe 2050 EU, you will find uh, summaries and so as to be able to take part in the future project of Europe 2050. I hope there will be more of you than, even more of you than uh, the number now. Okay, we know what the challenge is for 2023. Now we have an hour's uh, break. Uh, there will be some possibilities to interviews to be taken and also to take some lunch. I wish you to learn what you need and bon appetit for the lunch at 1.15. We look forward to meeting you again. The next block of panel discussions will be started. So enjoy your meal and to your health.
is the second block of the panel discussions and uh, as uh, understood we will be now discussing with the participants and we'll be talking about a number of issues which we are interested in or uh, questions where we lack the answer but uh, before I do so, I just want to mention yet another foreign delegation, and that's our friends from Poland. So, if I may, I'd like to invite Amelia Zawadzka, the, a Polish actress, who should tell us something. We know her from several uh, series. And uh, you could have seen the series uh, like Crimes or The Crown of Kings. So, Amelia Zawadzka. Good afternoon. Dobre uh, odpoledne. Jsem z Varšavy, ale já bych se vás ráda zeptala na... A, a jsem tady tedy, pokud máte nějaké otázky, tak uh, ráda odpovím. Máte nějaké? Takže zatím tedy dovolíte, jestli dovolíte, řeknu, jaká je moje vize Evropy v roce 2050. Podle mne se budeme všichni milovat. A ono to zní teda strašně dětinsky, nebo jako dětský sen. My jsme prostě rozdílní, každý jsme jiný, máme různé jazyky, různé kultury, různé tradice, ale já si myslím, že to je právě krásné, podle mne. Jsme rozdílní a Právě ta odlišnost by mělo být to, co budeme mít jeden na druhém rád. Měli bychom se mít rádi takový, jaký jsme. A v podstatě, že dojde k rozvoji nejenom v technologii, ale také v nastavení mysli. Takže určitě někdy uvažujeme o pokroku jenom jako o tom, že budou další stroje, další technologie, ale ona se vyvíjí také psychologie. Takže já bych si přála abychom se prostě v celém tom technologickém rozvoji neutopili. Války už snad nebudou, protože nejenom malé, protože samozřejmě nejenom ty malé a osamocené země by prohrály, ale statil by celý svět, takže nemá smysl válčit. Nic by z toho výhodného pro žádnou zemi nevyplynulo. Měli bychom se zaměřit sami na sebe, na naši civilizaci, nikoliv na to, abychom se snažili pořád jít kupředu a něco schromažďovat, ale spíš přemýšlet o tom, jak můžeme naše životy nějak zhodnotit. Thank you. Perhaps yet another question. I'll come up with microphone. Já mám. We as a civilization like uh, and uh, what about uh, your life and your uh, professional uh, life where uh, you see uh, your future? It's my life and future. Uh, so I'm an actress and I want to be an actress in the future, but not only just for playing in some movies, uh, but also kind of changing the world because Actors are mostly messed uh, with uh, celebrities. And we love celebrities and we listen to celebrities. So by having loud voice to all the population, I can make changes, I can change the world. So it's kind of a hard way, but by becoming an actress, I actually can change the world like politics. It's just, you know, funnier way. So it's uh, better. Uh, what will be my future? 
I guess I will focus on my needs and my family the most, but uh, my family are people I love, and people I love are most of the people in the world because, you know, people are awesome. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. So I guess we're all a big family, so I will just focus on my family. Thank you. Thank you. Tak Amelia Zavacká tady s námi samozřejmě bude také. A Valeria Zavacká will stay with us. And uh, now I would like to invite the people who will participate in the panel. The first to come is a lady, Marina Čapková. She is the uh, deputy mayor of Prague 6 uh, in charge of education and she's a member of the assessment uh, uh, committee for Prague uh, and Europe 2050. So you can ask about uh, um, the issues that are uh, that are related to education and culture. So Mrs. Čapková. Mr. Andrei Cherny, who is the general manager of Czech centers uh, within the framework of the project uh, Europe 2050, uh, the reflections and uh, uh, eco abroad, how uh, uh, cultural diplomacy and all that in connection with young generation. So all that are the suggestions of questions that can be asked from Mr. Chapek. Mr. Rabbi uh, David Maxa, he is involved in uh, inter-religious dialogue and in prevention of anti-Semitism. So this again is within the framework of the Europe 2050 project. Mr. Michal Medilka, who is the Dean of the Pedagogic Faculty of the University of the Charles University, there is the research project of on focused on modern pedagogical approaches. So welcome, Dean. And last but not least, man whom Yekna also ask questions is Tomasz Zima, the Emirat uh, Rector of the Charles University. Again, what can we do to make Europe a better place to live? So these are the topics for the speakers or for the panelists. So, I'll pass my mic to you. You may be the first to ask a question. I will ask uh, Mrs. Chapkova. And uh, we decided that now I will be calling uh, on you. I will just... Uh, since you all participated in uh, the project uh, Europe 2050 and your uh, in fact, a part of it, so you know it. I, uh, for the time being, I will thank the moderator. He's been with us and he deserves a bit of rest. And I'll start with, Ms. with Mrs. Chapkova. You're the deputy. Uh, a mayor of Prague 6. We met uh, when working on the uh, project Europe 2050. We organized a joint exhibition uh, which was hosted by the Town Hall of Prague and you were in the assessment commission as well. Um, if some... So, uh, there, there is always, for a project, there is always someone who initiates uh, the project and he uh, uh, he he actually so so you are the one who inspired the project and you communicate you communicated it 
uh, you spread the invitation on the schools and uh, the future participants, and then you assess them. So, how did you feel about that? Thank you. The cooperation on this project was not didn't come out of the clear sky. We had previously collaborated uh, on various artistic uh, competitions. However, in the context of the Czech presidency of the EU, the organizers choose this very European and very international topic. And it actually highlighted the, uh, the, 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 the reach, the outreach of this competition towards uh, the outer world and uh, Europe. And I think that it was all the more important because there was a huge involvement of schools in the project. And it was also because of this European outreach and the fact that uh, uh, the pupils knew that they might be even invited to introduce or present the projects abroad. So I was... Uh, uh, involved in the regional uh, uh, round of the competition for Prague 6 and I participated in the evaluation. Uh, however, Prague of, oftentimes uh, is a place where so many events, so many activities occur that uh, sometimes they can't just uh, be present everywhere. So we have given them some support and uh, we especially pointed at the, uh, the, the European uh, outreach of the, of the activity of the project. And uh, indeed, there were many participants and we were very happy because as you could see uh, by uh, what was uh, presented uh, um, in terms of the uh, works of art, the topics were so varied. And uh, you could realize that uh, there was really a large scale of topics that uh, the pupils uh, choose and uh, uh, um, produced something. Obviously, you can only see a small part of it. Uh, but what was a very pleasant surprise for me was that uh, the level, the artistic level, of the uh, of the uh, of, of the works of art was uh, really very professional or high. It was just beautiful. It was beautifully set. It was uh, uh, presented in a very beautiful way, and I would say that uh, there must have been certainly a very active uh, monitoring or, or or supervision that was exercised by the. Uh, by the teachers. Each of the works was uh, accompanied uh, by a short comment by the creator or by the pedagogist. That was a part of uh, the work actually because uh, sometimes you see something but then when you read the comment or whatever uh, is uh, uh, told about it, it adds yet another dimension. I think that I can speak also on behalf of my colleagues from the Commission that some of the uh, actually, uh, and that's not good news because some of the visions uh, that were presented by the participants um, were rather catastrophic. Uh, I mean, uh, it was rather gloomy and uh, while some were optimistic and thought that uh, in 2050 we would all be running in the flourishing meadows and uh, we would all be happy and free, but uh, what prevailed were rather sad and gloomy topics. And for me, as a pedagogist, it was really a motivation for an even deeper thinking about the way uh, pupils and students think I think it's been heavily influenced by the past COVID epidemic and above all the, uh, the, 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 the ongoing war. And uh, 
I realized to what extent it is extremely important to work with the, our children's psyche and to talk to the children to give them some stability or some background in order to allow them to see the future in a little more optimistic use. I think that what you said about this dark side of the works, uh, it was uh, uh, everywhere and uh, there are many such uh, uh, topics. But uh, there are also some works which show or which seem to hint at what could be the way out of it. So even things which may look perfectly black and gloomy, there's always a chance to do something about them. So once again, there will certainly be questions. Should you have any, we can... No, it is not the case. Uh, the Dr. Andrzej Czerny, he was with us uh, this morning. He is the director of Czech centers and you participated uh, in those activities which took place abroad. We spoke about the uh, artistic diplomacy in connection, in conjunction with the young generation and that's very beautifully said. I wonder how it uh, was demonstrated in 2022 and how it will further develop in 2050 or by 2050. Well, I said so a little bit at the beginning because uh, perhaps the title ought to have been how we don't want Europe in 2050 look like. When people are supposed to show in a creative way a kind of a vision, very often the first thing they think about is something negative and depicting something positive is more difficult. You can have the shining sun or some flowers. And uh, well, in this way, the artistic visions were sort of uh, shifted towards that dark side. But we believe that it is also the process of creation which is just as important as the uh, outcomes. So it is interesting to hear the stories about how the uh, work was uh, done, how it was executed. And uh, I heard a, a person who was in contact with the schools who tried to convince the schools to participate and uh, obviously while communicating, this was an omnipresent topic. And uh, once again, uh, this is quite a typical approach because uh, we didn't give uh, the students instructions how to proceed. We rather suggested or we showed them how they could approach this or that topic. Obviously, I am now thinking about how to proceed with this project and with this kind of communication, connecting the, uh, connecting the, uh, uh, the artistic uh, side of it with the civic side of uh, the or the civil side of the European uh, society is uh, sometimes tricky and difficult because there are so many formats which can exist. The artist in creation is just one of those platforms where the young people can meet and work together but they can find any number of platforms you like. So they would meet anyway. We who have the chance of influencing the parameters of education, we should strive to create these platforms and create open platforms where 
the young people would feel free and uh, would be free in defining the way of communicating their ideas oriented towards the future. Now, the artistic diplomacy, we can speak about cultural diplomacy or public diplomacy, but when speaking about cultural diplomacy, it is the artistic diplomacy as well. Why not call it that way? For us, the Czech centers and their role, the mission is to is, is to promote the good uh, renown of the Czech uh, Republic abroad. But uh, there are also the the, the, the task is also to, to, to establish cultural contacts, uh, links, and uh, it is not just about presenting the Czech Republic abroad, but it's a bit outdated. We do not need to boast of all what we believe that we can do better than the others, but we can just as well pride ourselves in doing things together, and the target group is very important. And I think that it is this type of projects, uh, the participative projects, uh, are based on a dialogue, on interactivity. And these are the formats which will be increasingly uh, numerous in our work, because we believe that this is the way ahead. We are a part of the world. We are a part of, the, of Europe. And I'm very happy that we had the chance to live during six months with these European topics and uh, who have uh, maybe an idea about what Czechia would like to add to Europe, but they themselves have to uh, further work with it, be them politicians or students or whoever. The European issues are everywhere around. I think we shall continue that, and uh, the significant thing is that we created uh, a network of schools who took part in the project, and certainly we shall continue from there. We will uh, want to spread that network and work on other projects uh, for us. The Joining the project was uh, very important. It helped us to create the target group of participants with whom we would like to go on working. So for us, this is the beginning of future work. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I looked through the projects from abroad. Uh, we typically work with schools and uh, organize shows, organize exhibitions. The teachers work with groups of uh, the students and then they have some outcome. But abroad there were other types of projects, uh, interactive ones, for example. And I think we should bring that uh, to general knowledge. And do you think that uh, the connection between Czech and foreign schools will help, uh, will be possible and help in the future? Well, I think we will arrive there. But that shouldn't be dictated from the top. It should be rather bottom-up approach. The types of camps that we took part in organizing is uh, the workshop uh, format in which more than one school will meet. Uh, before the schools wouldn't meet, uh, they only met during uh, the exhibition. But uh, we will, in the next step, we shall try to achieve ties between them. And we can work on that with Brussels to find uh, some financial tool to support that. And that would bring more added value. Are there any, any questions to the general manager? OK, so let's move on. Rabbi David, David Moxa. 
You took part in the project in the educational program rather aimed at teachers. Your topic, of course, is respect and understanding. How do you perceive that topic in uh, Europe 2050? Well, first of all, uh, Madam Director, I thank you and all the organizers of this show and conference. I, I am glad that you involved the Jewish community. We are a small community, but um, with our roots, we are rooted rather deeply. And this is an amazing uh, opportunity to meet inspirational people of all generations. We, are, we as Jews are said to like uh, Jewish jokes or anecdotes when we speak of optimism and pessimism. Yeah, I know the story uh, of a man coming to a rabbi saying, what is the difference between uh, a Jewish optimist and Jewish pessimist? And he says the Jewish pessimist says that uh, things cannot be worse now. And the optimists say, say uh, well, they certainly can be worse. This uh, exhibition and this project is one of the motivational factors saying of, um, explicitly that it needn't be so. The topics I was brought to by the project uh, were a uh, duo. One is uh, what should Europe look like in 2050 so that the Jewish community would be a firm part of it? Mm, on many occasions, anti-Semitism has been mentioned. Can we actually go out uh, in the streets with a kippah on our head without anyone attacking us in words or physically? And the second factor, very much interconnected, is what will Europe look like in its relation to various cultures, traditions, or religions that are present in it or will be there by 2050? Certainly, it will be a Europe where various uh, traditions uh, Cultural ones. I don't even. I don't uh, mean only religious ones. Uh, also, secular ones uh, that will uh, support uh, mutual understanding. I was uh, pondering on whether uh, Europe can be saved by religion. But uh, another question may be asked: Can Europe save religions? These two questions. Uh, are very much interconnected. We, in our generation, have an immense uh, opportunity to improve things. And uh, it's uh, namely our secularism as opposed to religion. We want to try to perceive phenomena. and. Uh, if we want to work on interconnection of various traditions and cultures, it uh, makes it even more beautiful. Um, it's made by the fact that uh, this conference takes part on uh, the territory of a university. We must see things based on their values, and we should go beyond the things that divide us. And if we do, then our future will be optimistic. So you are one of the optimists. I try hard. OK, I'm looking through ping or rosy uh, glasses. Again, are there any questions? No. OK, we move on. This conference is organized by the pedagogical faculty of the Charles University. And the dean of the faculty opened uh, a 
beautiful topic, and that's uh, developing art and how it can influence individuals and uh, also uh, the society. The society became rather rough, uh, brute now. How do you see this from your point of view of a teacher? First of all, let me speak of what topics uh, were taken up by the pieces of art. From the point of view of how we look at them as uh, teachers, what can we, what lessons can we draw? Speaking very shortly, if anyone chooses a topic to be developed, he or she is not able to explain why they took the topic up. But when we discuss it more profoundly, we come to the reasons. And that is what matters. When we look at pictures, we should realize that Probably the topics haven't been selected uh, by chance. Uh, those who speak uh, the, of them, or rather, it seems to us that the objects are well developed in um, speaking in artistic terms. That's why they appear in the exhibitions. But in fact, uh, the reasons are much more profound than that. Much happens in uh, the head of uh, the artist. Uh, what uh, matters is the vision, whether negative or positive one. And those visions should be uh, analyzed more deeply. And uh, many individual reasons can be found, as well as common reasons. And that brings a picture together of what uh, the young generation imagines based on their own uh, expressions uh, what the future what is the future they expect and that's what we can see on uh, the pictures another thing i would like to mention and that concerns uh, education to understanding of art, what actually happens in the head of a person who are uh, artistically active. I do not bring the two terms together, creativity and art. We know that from creativity to artistic creation, there is a long way. But many operations, uh, immense number of operations, uh, take place inside a person's head. Uh, various uh, centers are activated, uh, apart from those uh, who, which are uh, only connected to reasoning. Now, let's look at what the composition of objects of subjects is in a normal school what is the composition of the issues that we d deal with in our everyday life whether we say that uh, school prepares for life or it uh, lags behind this uh, attitude also is uh, in line with our attitude towards life. Most of thinking, of reasoning, of musing uh, is in the rational sphere. And uh, few things uh, remain for the emotional sphere. Emotions are typically pushed aside, and that is reflected in the actions of many people, not only young ones. In, uh, this world. So here there is an opportunity to support through art, to artistic actions, uh, to bring the spheres uh, together, the emotional sphere included. 
so that the good could be further developed in a human being. It doesn't only depend on our artistic creations, decorative creations. Uh, certainly such an effort develops uh, the emotional sphere and uh, they are irreplaceable by other thing. Whatever we try, we can speak of our emotion, of uh, the relations in a family, but uh, the creative activity connected to art cannot be replaced by anything. Thank you. One more question. Because uh, teachers uh, take part very much in it, and you, are educa you educate teachers. And some of uh, them told me the topic was uh, a difficult one. We didn't know how to seize it. Maybe uh, there is uh, rather the will of teachers you know, of uh, coming into the scope rather than uh, supporting children's uh, creativity. Uh, are they rather ready to talk about it instead of collecting awards? Well, there are two points of view. Each of them has its own weight, its spontaneity. We can let the person uh, to develop whatever they want based on their own emotions. And the second or the other point of view is that uh, the person should be led, led further. And that needs some sort of preparation and uh, indeed uh, there well, the art of the profession. He knows, or the teacher knows very well, what to do in terms of techniques. Uh, the optimum approach is that we provide uh, full freedom in topics, but we already know how and why it should be then technically done. Thank you. We already uh, announced the topic for 2023, and when, besides art, we rather speak of projects. People who were uh, considered the worst in drawing and painting. But I was good in mathematics. So we should take project people in who will show other things than uh, art itself. Well, there is another factor which is also important for any object we create, and that's the aesthetic uh, uh, part of it. We should not neglect it. Everything should uh, make a good impression on us, whatever the object will be. Okay, so we hope that we will further enhance uh, the numbers of uh, those interested. Yes, are there any questions? Martin? Thank you. Not really a question, rather a supplement. I uh, was informed that uh, this activity also is uh, expressed on uh, the Internet. Uh, so we get questions, uh, to what extent should the creativity be allowed in children without the influence on the part of uh, the teacher, and to what extent the teacher should lead the child. Some topics are closer to uh, your heart, some are more remote. So uh, it's, uh, we should uh, know that it's not only uh, promoted in this hall. Well, I'm sure that uh, most teachers knew what to do when they work with uh, the students. And it was already mentioned that uh, it's also the uh, 
aspect of age that matters. At uh, the early stage, uh, certainly we would not impose on the young person as to what they should be doing. But then situations come mm, when adults, for example, are educated, the future teachers, for example. And if we uh, let someone uh, to work quite freely, sometimes it's beneficial, but uh, sometimes uh, it appears that they uh, invent the already invented. So it's good to tell them, well, it's a good technique, but it has been developed uh, before you. So you should rather take your own topic. Okay, any other questions? Let's move on. Professor, when we agreed on this meeting, you surprised me by submitting a topic. How, what was the lesson that we learned from the young generation in this project Europe 2050? Can you answer this? The artistic activity of children and students that's going on both here and abroad should enrich us. So I think that every student hears from uh, his or her teacher, you're worse than those who were here before you. But I think that every generation is different because the circumstances and the opportunities are different. The students of the year 22 see the world, see the world under the perspective of the events that uh, took place or have been taking place, be that pandemic and the guerre and, and, and the war in Ukraine. And this has an impact on the creation. As uh, Mariana Chapkova said, there were many things where uh, fear and uh, worries were reflected. It's safety, but it's also environment. and. Uh, Sometimes we provoke the fear. I will give you two examples. In the years uh, 72 to 80, I went to uh, the elementary school and they were and uh, they were teaching us that uh, uh, in uh, uh, 20 in in the year 2000 there will be no more oil. Then much later we heard that there won't be any money to pay a retirement pensions. If you open a website, you will see that for one positive uh, piece of news, there are 20 uh, pieces of news which are negative. Uh, so, so one positive and 20 negative uh, news. But uh, young people want to be optimistic. We should be focusing on what is optimistic. So we should strive to uh, spread this optimism around us. and. There was a good deal of optimism in uh, the drawings or in the video presentations because there were encounters of old friends, of the families. There were also the ideas about how I want to live, what should my home look like, and so on. There was this Spanish project about how to build a house and what should be the means of building one and uh, many of the elements could be used as of now we couldn't we should not wait until 2050 and it also teaches us about how to behave how to handle our planet so i believe that there is uh, quite a lot of optimism in that we were talking with students when uh, preparing this we had informal debates and we were talking about health uh, care and uh, there was uh, much was spoken about the lack of psychiatrists and psychologists, especially for children. So uh, sometimes uh, people say, yes, we would like to be optimistic, but how and based on what? I think that young people, but the same applies to my generation. 
we shouldn't be just looking followers or uh, giving likes to uh, uh, somebody else's communications. Why don't people get together with three, four, five friends, be that in a park or in a pub, and let us talk about that. We shouldn't be just sending SMS to one another. We should be able to 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 uh, skip the social networks uh, and uh, to talk to talk about what is friendship and what the real physical communication is. Let us see how many people are riding in a tram or uh, sit uh, uh, in a park or in a restaurant. And instead of talking to the neighbors, they just watch the uh, the, the uh, smartphone. So now I would like, unless there are no more questions, uh, unless there are uh, any questions, I would li uh, like now to ask a final word before we conclude. Let us be optimistic and I'm looking forward to wonderful projects because even technical projects can be beautiful. It can be a piece of art and it can be beautiful. I'm sure that this project has a bright future because those people who conceived it do have uh, um, the mind for it and uh, they have the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 well, they feel they know what they want. I think that the way uh, our ways of communication are important. We should see to one another's eyes. We should be looking rather for physical meetings, not just on the net. And it is always amazing to meet young people in schools. And uh, if the project continues and if similar opportunities are uh, initiated, then it will certainly have a bright future. We should participate in the dialogue. We, elderly people, should be listening to the young people. We should try and strive to understand their motivation and their reasoning, because oftentimes we are reluctant to do so. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank the participants and the organizers. And since we are quite optimistic at this moment, I do hope that you'll be looking forward to Europe 2050. I am looking forward. I wish you a nice rest of the day. What I want to tell the public is that all the work which we uh, uh, bring together, this is a time-lapse project. I mean Europe 2050, and what we want is to publish the works in 10 or 15, 20 years, and the young generation of that time will see what their predecessors' ideas were and to what extent they were right in predicting what the future could be. We do know that things do not always develop in an easy manner, and it is good to take a step back and look back and uh, confront it with the reality. So I hope that this has generated a lot of stimuli that will enrich you. Are there any questions? I think that it is not easy to bring together uh, such a panel as we have now. OK, my questions are about the Czech centers. Don't you have any activity coming from abroad which could inspire us, which could enrich us in doing our project? I think that if my directors, directors of the Czech centers, uh, were here, they are very creative people, sometimes having problems with accountancy. but. Uh, we will now proceed to the evaluation of the project, and uh, very intensely so. That will be a part of the preparation for the next year's edition, and we will certainly be uh, following uh, whatever inspiration will arise abroad. Thank you very much, and could you please thank your directors, because with, without them, certainly we would never 
uh, attain those international dimensions. We couldn't invite them to our meeting, but uh, please uh, give them, convey our, our message of thanks. I think that they will be very glad that the work is appreciated here in Prague as well as abroad. So unless there are further questions, I'd like to put an end to the first panel discussion and we'll have a short break and uh, we will continue with the next panel. So now I'll have my cup of coffee and I pass the floor on the moderator. Thank you. And now I think it's the right time for 15 or 10, uh, 15 or 20 minutes break. We will resume our work at half past two. Thank you.
Dámy a pánové, krásné dobré odpoledne. Je tady. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second part of our panel discussions, and I will now speak of the topic and in invite those persons that we expect to tell us something. So it's panel number two, the possibilities of a career in the EU and possibility of spreading the, success, the experience of successful candidates. So it's really about career possibilities. In uh, the topic uh, of uh, Europe 2050, mobility was very much discussed and the preparation for the future. And we will now have the possibility to uh, take this up in the office of the government. Uh, they have their own uh, department. Uh, uh, speaking of these aspects of uh, the structures of the EU, so may I now ask Mr. Pavel Kukuchka, who is head of uh, communication department of uh, the EU representation in the Czech Republic. He works uh, for uh, the uh, actual structures of the EU in Brussels. So he will be able to tell us how these institutions work and how the one can join them. Next one is Pavlina Matsonova, coordinator of the Eurodesk network for the Czech Republic. We shall speak with her of the opportunities for young people and uh, other opportunities than uh, really the study ones. The next speaker will be Tomasz Novotny, who is the ambassador to the Charles University and is an informer on the possibilities are in uh, the EU institutions and diploma engineer uh, Martin Storkan, um, a center for internship in the Czech Republic. This uh, hardly needs any explanation. Now it's up to you who will be the first to take the floor and uh, speak to the audience. Right, right. I hold a microphone, so it will be me. Good afternoon. My name's Pavel Kukachka. Thank you for welcoming me. I am here I, uh, on behalf of the rep EU representation in the Czech Republic. And I am here because I am a big fan of uh, the project to get as many checks into European structures as possible. My first point will be the most important one. Czechs are my favorite colleagues, most favorite colleagues. Uh, their sense of humor uh, means that they have a nice uh, approach to all issues, uh, and that's what uh, many uh, European institutions lack. In the European Commission, there are about uh, 800 Slovaks working. Do you know how many Czechs work there? Not twice as much, twice as many. Uh, there are only 900 people. So the possibility of having a Czech in your team is rather slight. So I moved to Prague to work in uh, the representation in uh, the Czech Republic so as to have as many Czechs as possible in my team. So I tried hard. And now I uh, came to you and I want to call on Czech students and young professionals to come to work for us and to go to work in Brussels. So that's my short introduction as uh, for the uh, career in uh, the European institutions. I will then uh, further devel develop my ideas further. Pavlina. Well, I shall make an introduction as well, and then we shall continue in discussing my name is Pavlina Matsonova. I'm from the Department uh, of European Co Cooperation in uh, Eurodesk. I am 
glad that I was invited here to say a few words on not only on internships, but also on the opportunities you have in informal education. Uh, the interconnection of uh, formal and informal education was already mentioned. In 2050, the credibility belief will be further enhanced through our programs such as Erasmus Plus or the European Community of Solidarity. So that's one thing I would like to speak on. And since I was here since nine, I wanted to see the beautiful paintings and videos. Uh, I will comment on what I saw. And, uh, in fact, in your drawings, you were declaring, or were rather calling for some uh, deeds or for some change. And through our programs, such as the European uh, Association for Solidarity, such changes can be introduced. You can, uh, instead of uh, drawing something, you can write a project. And I can continue a debate on that. So that's it from me, from me for the introduction. Thank you. My name is Tomasz Nowotny, and for three years now I am uh, the ambassador to UKH for uh, in the Charles University. I'm here to inform on uh, the possibilities of. Uh, internships uh, and uh, jobs in the European uh, uh, Europe in the European Union each uh, community has its own ambassador and I am trying to spread the words of the possibilities in the Charles University I am also a graduate of Erasmus in, Ir in Ireland there are number of uh, opportunities, both in uh, secondary and high school, higher school, higher education. My name is Martin Storkan. I uh, lead the register of uh, internships for students. We not only do we support long-term uh, internships together with companies and institutions, in involving students, but most of all, we play around with skills, how you can put into operation what you learned at school or in the institution. They we, then we play around with it. Uh, I want to know what skills uh, should be owned by students so as to be able to achieve success in what they should already be trained before they go uh, for an internship abroad. There is no one else uh, I could pass on the microphone to. But let me stand up. There was a person from a school here in the morning who made an impression of uh, a few for future minister or a representative of uh, some uh, big institution i am let me ask lukash what do you need you will what do you think you will need to make your way in a great big institution and what else should you learn oh thank you <laughs> i think what really matters today is uh, communication at work, at school, uh, in the family, with your partner. It's communication that is all important. If you cannot communicate, uh, you won't go far in any sector. Uh, you cannot be good uh, at anything, absolutely anything. Or you can be very good, but if you are unable to sell it, so to say, it will be good for nothing. So you should be self-confident in a healthy way, and you should know what you are doing and why you are doing it. I, th I believe that Lukash is uh, quite clear about this. So let me 
move on to the moderator. If you have any specific questions, please let us know. I will pass the microphone, microphone to you. So far, there are no questions, but I have one to Mr. Kukuchka. He said that in the European institutions, there are only 900 checks. I know that it is, there is the EU administration school in Prague. It uh, generates eight classes of uh, people by passing A-levels every year. And you can expect that uh, at least 200 people are well informed, or basically informed, about the things that are taken up there. If you have 200 and 250 people ready to work uh, in the EU and they never make it to Brussels, uh, or what? where do you think the problem is? It's. Uh, 360 kilometers. Well, but well, it's um, oh, it's uh, 960 kilometers. But only it's only 200 kilometers more than from Prague to Kosice, where I come from in Slovakia. Uh, but. Uh, Maybe I will now give the floor to Tomáš, His Excellency Tomáš, as the ambassador. Maybe he could, uh, well, describe one of the steps to be taken. Well, I am uh, really a gr uh, graduate of the school you mentioned. And uh, they really gave us the possibility to go for a foreign internship. Oh, it was uh, mandatory, and I was uh, really uh, tested in an international institution, and uh, that broadened my uh, horizon. I saw that it's not necessary for me to stay in Prague or Brno or Pilsen, that I can freely go abroad and uh, bridge the gap. Many Czechs do not really know they could work in those far off places. So we have to organize uh, uh, events like this to tell them that everybody can try it, try it uh, whether they have been graduated in the university or haven't. You can just visit the Brussels, uh, the, the Brussels institutions and find out what the possibilities there are. Uh, the main reason I think it was uh, uh, scarcely mentioned. Now, in the school you speak about, uh, which involves the internship as a duty, is it only abroad or in this country, and how long is it? And on the second grade, we had uh, two weeks of uh, mandatory, uh, compulsory, internship and uh, four weeks in, on the third grade, and about 20 or 30 of us could go abroad to Ireland, to Great Britain, to Spain, to Germany. Uh, the uh, compulsory internship uh, takes place in uh, the Czech Republic, and then uh, based on the Erasmus program, they can go abroad. OK, let me pass the floor to a lady. We have a question from uh, the audience. How to overcome the fear? We already spoke of the distance. And uh, in this country, where if you are uh, obliged to uh, cross half of uh, the country to go to work, uh, it is uh, all discouraging, taken as discouraging. Well, I mm, still perceive that we are in a minority as women. I thought you were uh, aiming at this. I think that the main thing is uh, motivation. When you know that you 
can go abroad. Uh, often uh, the young people do not know they can do so. On one occasion, I can see young people sitting here. Uh, if you are afraid you don't want to go, you can uh, uh, go uh, under exchange program, which is part of the Erasmus program. You can go out and uh, find your own occasions. It's not organized by the school. The condition is that five young people have to go. So you will never be alone. If you are afraid of language barrier, we Czechs uh, underestimate ourselves so much. When we uh, actually get uh, to foreign countries, you find out that you can really speak. So if you see a five people, people group over there, you can uh, plan it. And well, maybe not even five, but four. And you can move out uh, to various EU countries, and not only to them. And uh, since uh, also teachers follow us in this uh, high school Erasmus, if there are teachers and if you are teachers and your school is not uh, as, uh, involved, you can find out more on our website and then go to your director and uh, tell him or her, we want to go out on the Erasmus. And uh, thanks to such people, such uh, students can arise like Thomas here. So that's what I wanted to uh, add. Our facilitator maybe has run out of questions. No? OK, uh, Madam Director, I wasn't here because we are preparing the opening ceremony of uh, the exhibition. You speak of uh, programs which are meant for students, but uh, the studies will be over one day. When I was passing my state exams, I had a student uh, next to me, and she was panicking about what will happen and after she finishes the school. Can the graduates? Uh, address you, ask you for an assistance in uh, in the internship when they are no more students. Yes, of course, you can address me. Uh, you can find me also in the Facebook. The whole world is open. You can go straightly to work or you can go for an internship. Uh, which is also paid, and uh, typically it's for half a year. The biggest program is called Blue Book. It's a uh, program of internships uh, by, run by Brussels. Uh, about 12,000 uh, people apply every year, and 900 are uh, accepted. There are, I think there are three rounds of that. Uh, competition, and then the institutions contact you and are are in contact, and you can work with, uh, for example, the parliament. The program is called Schumann. And uh, then concrete specific positions are announced, and you can see what the occupancy is. And if you can see that for one position there are 300 candidates, then, of course, there is no uh, way, but uh, you can also try it directly uh, if there are no candidates or if there are just very few. And uh, you can also go through the uh, EPSO platform or EPSO, uh, you, you just uh, insert EPSO dot, uh, uh, well, uh, the address is available if you ask me. And uh, I can also uh, read a paper uh, in your school. Usually when I read a paper, when I give a lecture, I uh, make one half which is theoretical and then I have a discussion and I can provide all the necessary information and the contacts. Well, I just want 
to underline one important aspect of uh, a scholarship. You needn't be aged 20 or 25, not even 30. You can be older than that. You needn't be afraid. If you want to test something new for, let's say, six months, why not take a scholarship, uh, sorry, uh, an internship in, uh, in Brussels? And uh, I did it in Prague. Uh, when you go to, uh, when you want to work for Brussels, you can also do it here in Prague. So you can combine a work for Brussels in the form of an of uh, of an in, of uh, um, uh, scholarship, and you stay at home because you can assure the uh, communication and you have to speak the language, of course. And uh, I must admit that right now we're lacking one person. We were just unable to help. So please help us. We need you. I know skip um, further experience how to get work with European institutions, but I'll just say one word and drop the mic. No, I won't drop it because it's not in my possession, so I won't don't want to, to, to destroy it. Just one word, that's EPSO. E-P-S-O. EPSO is a European uh, uh, Personal Selection Office, and it's an institution which uh, is in charge of the recruitment and tenders for, um, uh, uh, for um, positions with Brussels. With Brussels, uh, with Brussels, everybody uh, knows uh, stories about that. Uh, tests are very difficult. Uh, many people got traumatized, and they could tell you really some horror stories. People who didn't know how to get prepared for the uh, the good news, though, is that the Czech Republic has a project which supports uh, the candidates for positions and. There are uh, courses, they are uh, 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 lessons uh, that are provided for the attendants or for the, for the candidates, and you will get plenty of uh, instruction materials. But you just have to try it. You have to go and test it repeatedly. It's not that you try it once and it doesn't work and you just give up. I went there. Uh, I went to seven tests and I only succeeded in two. One of them was for the position of an assistant where, and, and the other one was uh, a managerial position. And uh, it was really very, very difficult. Uh, so you have to try over and over. If you're scared, if you're afraid, Indeed, it's 500 kilometers, and you may be uh, discouraged by that, but I think that what discourages you much more is the fear of failure. Czechs are fantastic, and they can uh, compete against many other Europeans uh, who are something like 480 million, including Slovaks. So, you have to remember the word, the acronym EPSO, but you should also remember the French word courage. And uh, now uh, I pass the floor on Pavlina. Okay. Our, opportuni our opportunities and more opportunities. It is not just the studies, it can be exchanges, it can be all sorts of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, mechanisms uh, like the European uh, solidarity and uh, so on. 
it may be that uh, 30 years is not the boundary or not the limit, but uh, if you're not yet 30, you can uh, take a voluntary job, you can go to another country and help there, and uh, you can teach, you can work in the media, you can help uh, uh, repair uh, monuments or work in uh, uh, monuments. I think that uh, we are not yet accustomed to the gap year which exists, or sabbatical year perhaps, which exists in uh, other states where you can take one year and do something new. That is this European Fund of Solidarity, which is quite uh, useful. And uh, there is also a kind of a competition. If you are, uh, um, if you are uh, younger than 18, you can participate in a competition and you can win a ticket, uh, a round ticket for traveling around Europe. So you can uh, go either on uh, the website of the EU or, or of the Czech representation, or you can uh, just um, address the help desk. Whatever foreign experience and whatever the time you stay there will change your perspective about the world around and about yourself, because you're taken out of the comfort zone that is not the parents who comfort you, who stay, who, who take care of you. You have to, uh, you have to fend for yourself. So, uh, do it. Try it. I suppose that if you speak uh, about uh, that, the, is the time limit of thirty years. So you will have to produce your ID card. Well. I'm afraid that I'm past that date, but I think that we could find some possibility or some platform uh, which could be open also to other people. A question to Martin. What competences are expected from a student in order to qualify for a position it uh, in uh, in the European institutions. <laughs> well, I agree with Lukash. The communication skills are really a basis, and I think that I would also say that foreign languages would be a part of the qualification. I wonder whether this is a trap. No, no languages. That's absolutely true. Communication skills. Well, I admit that I have a few autistic colleagues who are rather focused on analytics and they are not particularly strong in communication, but they have Whatever, whatever skills and whatever competencies you may have, then they may be of some use with the European institutions. I looked at the EPSO uh, uh, page, and you could read there that the uh, European Commission is looking for a psychologist and an expert in, for security. They are looking for uh, veterinaries. They are looking for people who are knowledgeable with social media. And the European institutions are also looking for accountants, for financial officers. They're looking for auditors. And it's a long quest. And we know that we really keep an eye uh, on how European money is spent. So if you want to spend time on uh, tables and Excel tables, then uh, you have to, uh, uh, then, then you can try your luck. 
So once again, I repeat, all skills, all competencies and uh, everything, be it geography, be it veterinary, uh, be it uh, uh, chemistry, be it uh, administration, everything can be useful. If you don't like working in Brussels, you may not work for the European structures in Brussels. One of the, of the interesting things is that there are the so-called European agencies. And if you really are reluctant to leave the Czech Republic and at the same time you are excellent in IT skills, if you know, if you're knowledgeable in geostationary orbits, if you know a lot about the space, the outer space, then it is in one of the Prague, uh, Prague uh, uh, quarters called European Union Space Program Agency. I don't dare to translate that. And uh, they, are, uh, they are focused on the research of space. So we have the small European NASA here. So if you want to if you want to work uh, uh, in the field of security, you can go and travel in Italy. If you want to protect the intellectual property, you can work in Spain. If you want to uh, combat drugs, uh, then it's Portugal. If you want to uh, work in the field of nuclear fu fusion, you go to France. If you want to work on finance, it's Germany. Just anything. Slovakia, if you want to live and work in Slovakia, you will be protecting people on the labor market because there is the ELA agency. If you want to protect European uh, frontiers, it's Warsaw. And how can I learn that? EPSO, that's what I just said. I'm an analyst. Obviously, I'm no longer within the age limits, but I could be interested because there are scores of topics which are focused on the um, school uh, A-level levers. And uh, I think that uh, we have to know how to pursue our dreams and we have to acquire the competencies and uh, you have to be able to find information how to get access to it. You named various countries where you can find institutions, um, uh, where jobs are provided, where jobs are available, how to get the information. Let me add to the information. When uh, speaking about Erasmus, I thought, OK, I am a student or a graduate. I am under uh, 30. I am quite an adventurer. And uh, I may be just in my final year before the graduation. And uh, I might consider going to Brussels. I may want to go to uh, Erasmus and to Brussels. I think there will be people who will work with me and uh, I will have learned a lot of things. Is that really so easy? But I am over 30. I am no longer a, a, a graduate. I uh, am just, uh, I just had a role with my uh, superior and I want to quit. I want to go and work somewhere else. I will go to Brussels and they take one person where there are 300 candidates. And uh, I will go to another place where perhaps there are only three candidates. What kind of a proposal is that? What kind of a, a job is that? And is it really so possible? Yes, indeed. If you agree with a group of friends, if you find the ways of funding the trip, if you find out what documents you need to produce, and if uh, you uh, contact uh, the uh, Czech 
uh, permanent representation in Brussels, then you can uh, do you can do a lot of things if you're really attracted by the international environment in Brussels, and if you're really fed up with your uh, with your boss. Yes, you have to go ahead with it, and you can. That it is as easy as that. But you have to go through uh, all the tests because you have to prove that you have the competences which are required for the post. You have to have uh, some minimum education. Uh, you are uh, assigned points for uh, the level of uh, graduation. You need to know uh, uh, at least one language, or um, and it must be English or French or German. Is the mother's tongue also among those languages which you have to know? I would say yes. Yes, it is also one of the official languages. Thank you. OK, I'm a mathematician. No, I'm a founder. I'm a founder, and I have uh, very broad competences. And since I am uh, uh, cooperating with uh, Martin, I am also. I know that there are also competencies which you can either acquire at school or during your life. But wouldn't it be uh, practical to have uh, some? Uh, a list of competences which can be requested to make it easier to find uh, uh, this information for the for, for, for the candidates. Because now you are here and you are telling us about uh, the situation in Europe. But is there any register, any, a registry or something where you can find all this information? Well, I will now speak in Pluto. There is uh, something which is called Europass, and it is a kind of interconnection there. And Europass has been extended to include uh, the uh, voluntary work, and uh, they now address schools, and the information is available. So there is something like that. So you have the Europass, and you have the uh, voluntary. Uh, the, the opportunities of voluntary work, and a young person can come, he will insert the competencies, he will uh, mention his previous uh, experience and all that. Young people can also uh, uh, draft the uh, CV, and the Europass is also used, and you can tell more about that because there are more advantages. Actually, that is the link which is uh, 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 which is available. Yes, uh, Europass is really a great thing. And those of you who haven't yet got it, you just uh, create one because that's uh, uh, it, it is just uh, easy to draft uh, the a CV. You needn't work uh, with the word. Uh, you need not. Uh, uh, bother yourself with the layout because everything is prefixed and it also mentions the competencies and you know to what extent you're advanced in this or that competence in office and so on, what kind of certificates you have and what are your uh, strong points and what, you are, what are your weak points. Uh, Europass is really intuitive and uh, you can also uh, w when I, when I was looking for a job I was still in my uh, grammar school uh, sorry after after the school I, I wanted to find a job I found that it was very uh, very easy and transparent and I think that uh, even uh, the, the, in the in, in the European institutions, they only go uh, through uh, the, through Europass. It is also about the permeability uh, of the system. There is a list on the European level, list of uh, specific competencies where you can cherry pick and find identify your competences and if our students then have shown some of the competencies already it 
would be nice to allow them enter uh, to, 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 to enter some other competencies uh, which uh, they will have to acquire. There is what we call the list or nomenclature of competencies and uh, what you insert in Czech is then translated into other languages. Uh, the Euro Pass is a great instrument if you need to uh, do a kind of mind mapping of what your competencies are and what your hitherto career is. Last time I filled in it was 10 years ago and I was weeping because it was difficult to fill in. It was only available in English, German and French. But you won't believe it. The EU is able to improve and every year there is an improvement. Now it is one of the best free generators of uh, CVs. It, it can generate a very good CV and uh, it is not just the EU but other uh, HR agencies that will be very thankful to you because uh, the final product is very clear and understandable for them. So do use it. So besides the Czech pass, passes or passports, use also the European ones. As to the competencies, I don't think it is a very precise, there is a very precise list of competencies that are requested by the European Commission, uh, by the European institutions. But I think that for each position, there are specifications about those competencies which are uh, desirable for this or that uh, position. But the competencies depend on the profile and uh, sometimes experience is also uh, required. So it may not be uh, adapted or suited to those who have just left the school and uh, apply for the first job. There are positions which uh, uh, where uh, um, several years of experience of previous career are uh, requested. They sometimes want experienced people, people who have practical experience. And uh, there are uh, competencies or rather experiences which you can't really acquire unless you practice. You can't be an experienced veterinary unless you've practiced. So this is also focused also on people who can be around 40, 50 or even 60. So why not try it out? One question we have, uh, uh, we, we are also streaming for those who are participating in the project Europe. Uh, 2050. I just wonder whether people from abroad are interested in working in the Czech Republic. Do they apply for positions here? It was a difficult question. Unfortunately, I don't have the information, but I'll pass the question on somebody else. For us as institution, you need to know a Slovak the Slovak language. But I know that on Czech universities there are uh, plenty of students who are in the Erasmus program and the Czech Republic is one of the most active countries in this. Oftentimes I meet Spaniards, Swedes who like to come here 
so they, they love to spend the Erasmus here. And there are institutions which exist within the EU that are called College of Europe, and that's really for the cream of the cream, for young people who really want to uh, to, 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 to develop or, or to work in the European institutions and uh, um, stay there. I graduated from a university in Preshov and, uh, well, sorry. Uh, when we talk about Discovery EU, about uh, the voluntary work and about uh, stays of foreign students in Czechia, we always keep talking about uh, uh, about advertising. And uh, um, I, I do think that people from abroad are interested to come to Prague, chiefly, uh, mainly in Prague, although we try to redirect them to some other regions because we want to show to them that in Czechia there are also other beautiful spots, not just Prague. And uh, we recently saw some statistics and we could see uh, from across Europe, and we realized that uh, uh, while Germany was uh, uh, on top of the list, uh, we were fifth, so it is not so bad. And it's not just this program, there are other uh, um, programs, and we always seek to advertise the possibility of studies here in Czechia. We want people not only to go to universities and to study there, and we also want them uh, to participate in the informal programs. So Czechia is simply a popular country. I don't know how many students apply for studies in uh, my school, but uh, I know that, uh, yes, people from abroad are interested to work in the European Agency, for instance. And uh, I have one question. We bring together um, uh, the grammar school students and uh, high school uh, students, and uh, I mean uh, uh, colleges. Is there any room, uh, when talking about uh, those uh, uh, um, positions, is it also possible for uh, uh, the uh, undergraduates or even uh, those who've just left the secondary school? You will find all in the yes, US bar. So you shouldn't be afraid if you want to continue your university studies, but or you believe that you want to uh, interrupt that, you can take one of the programs that you are offering. Yes, exactly. Uh, it mm, can help many people. Many people took a pause after their high school, and only later they realized what it is that they want to study, because otherwise it would be a pity to study for three years and then realize uh, you want to do something else. All right, we said quite a lot. May I address the, those of the young generation of students who are present? Don't you have a question? That would be based on uh, the discussion. Not so far. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There is one. Yes. Please. Thank you. As a representative of the active students who are interested in uh, what our education look li looks like, so uh, are there institutions that support uh, uh, spreading of uh, information on the EU in uh, secondary schools. Uh, we have a big problem because mostly people know nothing of the EU, or they believe uh, things that are quite incredible. Okay, we came to terms. I was thinking about the topic. Uh, Thank you for the question. 
Yes. Let's start with a technical questions. Uh, the education is not competence for uh, the EU. It is exclusively it uh, concerns uh, the member states. But when we think we could help how to, in how to spread information on the EU in schools. Uh, since we work with uh, excellent uh, social sciences uh, teachers uh, and we work with, uh, with NGOs uh, who look to the programs that make decisions in Europe, you may find out how difficult it is uh, to make a decision between 27 countries. Uh, so it's uh, good to look to this information and to find out which uh, schools are wanted. And uh, those who are interested can join uh, regional structures. And then you can get up to the Czech and Slovak final as a superstar. Uh, other institutions, too work with schools. Uh, we invite, for example, various uh, class groups to come to our place, or we go and lecture at the schools themselves. Uh, we have a preview. This only remains in uh, this room, because uh, the first night will, will be next week. New educational film has been prepared for the higher classes of uh, elementary school. And it says, go to Brussels. I worked on the project uh, for about half a, uh, one year and a half. It's an animated film lasting about 40 minutes. And I hope it will reach every classroom and there is a big number of information pieces on uh, the EU. And when you see how, what uh, the self-service uh, uh, shop looked like in, back in the 1980, it will take you back to that. Uh, so please support uh, uh, this film in getting to each and every school. Some schools are active in rejecting any information on the EU. Some uh, headmasters come and say that EU is, polit is politics, and we do not want politics in the school. And it's difficult to respond if, uh, for example, fish does do not want to speak of the water they're swimming in then what should be done? Oh, uh, it's only a piece of complaint on my side. Let me be slightly positive. I want to say that in the regions, the level of uh, awareness really is raised by the representation of the EU. And then there are Euro centers, <laughs> uh, such as uh, the prime minister's office. We also have partners. They are one of those. Uh, so there is not only effort from uh, coming from Prague, but of also from the regions, whether it concerns the representation or the Euro centers. Uh, uh, I can see that, that the people there uh, try hard to go to school and spread information. I say it from a different position, but uh, the effort is there. There was this question asking about the position of the EU. Look at their Instagram. I do like it. And uh, I'm really recognizing how they uh, explain things uh, based on the language of the younger generation. I am sometimes myself impressed. And uh, the effort is definitely there. So uh, one should only praise it. Eurocentres and Europe Direct uh, are joining their efforts in that. 
Not on the mic. The interpreter cannot hear. The interpreter cannot hear. You can address Euro, a Euro Center, the closest Euro Center, or the Europe Direct, which is run by the representation. They will get materials for you, so do address them. Back to the career. There is a structure supporting checks in the EU institutions. It's uh, the Prime Minister's office working with the Foreign Ministry, uh, trying to put um, uh, the representation of uh, individual countries into a balance. Once you started on that, I am already uh, distributing behind the scene information. Tomorrow, one of uh, the very secret persons uh, will come, uh, the head of the General uh, Directorate for HR. And she will be in uh, lobby, lobbying in uh, ministries to further promote this activity. And based on uh, the commission, uh, this will not get out of this room. There is a strong possibility that quotas will be introduced from uh, uh, for people speaking uh, Czech speaking persons. I said that we want you there. Right uh, on uh, the question which I can remember. I don't want to take the floor away from the young ones. Uh, if I may continue on what uh, Mrs. Deputy Ministress had to say. Uh, she was asking whether we got our competences at school or out of it. When you think of it, it may be an inspiration for young people. Where did you get your main competences? And what would you recommend to a younger person? What uh, else could they uh, try to add more if you were to return several years back? Uh, before I answer the question, once we are at skills, I heard of uh, some special professions such as IT people, manager of something or pharmaceutical sector. We also communicate with uh, the practice of uh, the companies. Uh, during the last year, uh, there is a big change of uh, the way students are regarded. Uh, before they used to say, we seek that or uh, this or that type of person. But uh, lately, during the last year, what they search for is uh, multi-competences. For example, uh, an IT per person should also be uh, well-versed in communication or in languages. So there is some combination of the skills needed. As uh, the students collect uh, the new abilities it gives them uh, it gives them a number of opportunities and uh, this brings me to the future to uh, Europe 2050 uh, the students are getting ready and when they finish their studies for example if you know two or three languages um, the fourth one is easier to get and it's uh, similar with the skills. If you have some list of skills already, it is easier for you to react to new challenges and to get new skills in a simpler way. Certainly, it's a recommendation to collect a scope of uh, abilities uh, while the school still can send you out to companies to practice. You may pass a, um, an obligatory uh, two weeks uh, internship 
we may have a student who already passed, but now he or she works on various projects, which is no more his duty. But such opportunities should be taken and uh, uh, scale uh, or scope of uh, skills should be acquired. So this is from the point of view on, of uh, uh, the way of proceeding in this way. And I'll try to answer the question from uh, the audience. What helped me most when I was uh, in on the second grade uh, in my secondary school, I uh, organized a team which helped me when I was uh, uh, looking for a job. I had this uh, type of experience. Uh, uh, an internship abroad uh, helped me to further promote my uh, language knowledge. And uh, in the university, then I also um, took part in the activities of a so of a political science club. I did uh, such things in my leisure time, and that helped me to find a good job. So one should uh, look for possibilities also in his or her leisure time. Now, thinking what changed me most, uh, if I look at a profession I am in now, it was really traveling abroad. I was on Erasmus, I was on a volunteer program, a whale saving program in Iceland. We were promoting what you call a sanctuary. When you come back, you can't really think of the Czech word that says the same thing. All these journeys abroad gave me a lot. Uh, so I uh, appeal to everyone, travel out of the country. The mere fact that you of go for a foreign journey is something uh, helping you to learn. But for example, you learn how to wash your own clothes. Probably that's not a problem for uh, women. Um, I wanted to return. Well, some of us uh, <laughs> learned to uh, wash their clothes uh, as early as in their 50s. And back to the question, I wouldn't change anything. There are things uh, of the type I could uh, get more information. I could have got more information when I was younger. But simply there is a, an age when you come to it and uh, you learn with time and you learn where the truth is. Uh, now, there was a question, who was it that influenced you more? Well, it was my lady teacher. Oh, I can still see that stress, and therefore I underscore the combination of the informal and formal. Uh, the teacher is number one when I uh, leave uh, the family apart. Uh, the teacher can influence you if uh, your mm, language teacher uh, support you in writing, uh, it uh, gives you a possibility of career. And I can see that, uh, therefore, also the informal education has to be promoted. Yes, a great question. I don't know whether to take it personally. Should I perform my job and tell you about the competences in the European Commission? Well, person being personal at first, depending on what you studied, uh, that doesn't uh, define you in a way. Every few years we have a new possibility to redefine ourselves, to become an improved or maybe deteriorated person. I sometimes imagine life oh, the way uh, you imagine an uh, IT game as a computer game. 
you bring in your competencies and you get more skills. From my personal point of view, what I was 20 years ago is far from being similar to what I am now. Now, what my job requires, uh, as I said, if you want to be an auditor or a veterinary doctor, you can do so. But imagine you uh, are 35 or 36, your uh, wife leaves you. I'm not speaking about myself. But if you want to be a translator for the European institutions, you would not believe what an ecosystem is there. In the European uh, Commission, about 20,000 workers, uh, you can have a career growth and professions. I know translators who later became uh, HR specialists. I know auditors uh, who eventually became communicators. I know communicators uh, who later started to work in the finance uh, sector. There is a number of possibilities. Once you are in the EU, EU institutions, it only depends on you. If you think you sell yourself uh, uh, cheaply, that's not true. You can uh, change uh, your job uh, in a very principled way. I hope that I attracted uh, some of you. Well, it, you, we speak of uh, the EU Commission and other big things, but if I look at the age structure, structure Oh, you should first work with small uh, things. Maybe you bring a team together in your school and you start to uh, publish a student magazine, for example. Well, that brings us to the end of this uh, uh, debate. Thank you, Mr. Kukuchka. Thank you, Ms. Masonova. Uh, thank you, Mr. Novotny. And Mr. Storkan, thanks to all of you. If you still have some questions, certainly we, uh, these four people will be with us. And we now have about 20 uh, minutes uh, break, and then we'll move on to the opening ceremony. The conference is now over. Much success, not only in uh, European institutions, but wherever you will decide to go during your educational process. And good luck in choosing your future jobs. I hope that the information was uh, uh, useful for you. And if you want to get more, our guests will be at your disposal uh, during the next 20 minutes. Goodbye. <laughs>